Hey Cat Cats, nice manly guitar for you this week. Um, I'm sounding much cleaner now that I've replaced all the pedals. Well, I've not replaced them, I've just tidied them up and used a better power supply. <laughs> Serious, yes. Special low, um, was it a 22 and a half inch scale? Yeah, so in fact, I switched to it as well, obviously, as I always do. Um, so this is a middle position. But when you try and distort a wee chippy strat. I can't really get away from it. This is the special switch. Hey Ben, how's it going? Oh. Everyone's just salivating over my super expensive candy rocks with an X. That's how you know that it's proper rocking. <coughs> yeah, so I might fall asleep. Quite early. I, I got up at uh, five this morning. I went to Block Air Market just because I don't know. I woke up and it was cold. Why can I hear the computer? Hmm. Um. So I went to Block Air Market and uh, I bought a guitar, twenty quid. Uh, uh, I meant to, I meant to drink it first. So then I'm actually I'm worried about. For some reason, I can hear the computer fan like it's overheating just now. So it might just suddenly cut out. But there's nothing, nothing surprising there from a live stream. Number 30. Number 30. <coughs> See, I always thought it went up to 28. I'm sure it used to go up to 28. Uh, but this is 30. Yep. Ah. Uh. Yeah, so I was actually, um, someone was talking about the Pill Paul, the Pill Gilbert, the Paul Gilbert Micro, which I think is the 22 and a half inch scale as well. Um, it's not a computer, it's the pedal. I think it's because everything else is so quiet. Like it is pure deadly silent in here. Normally there's just a rumble going on. You like the wine coming from the rap pedal. That's fine. It's vintage. I'm really annoyed scratch in the back of the neck right there, though. But it looks pink on the back. Oh. So has anyone else bought a new guitar today? Um, the market was a bit depressing. Hey, Mr. White Snake, uh, did, did I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't find that uh, picture. I was going to put it as the thumbnail for this, um, this stream. A three part on a Zoom, yeah. I, that was all I was going to play it. <laughs> really, I had to make sure it worked. Um, 
I, I don't think it's, it did sound really good. I thought it's just if you like delay, and it's like I just don't think there is or these effects. I'm not really interested in them. Um, I've got too many guitars, and they all sound slightly different, so it's like I don't have enough. I think maybe one of these effects units, if you're basically just got one guitar, you can maybe just sit and work your way through it. But I mean, some of it was fun. I don't know. Um, I do think that the the multi effects thing, having that um, parameter that you can change with a with a pedal, is a is a cool thing. Um, like just for psychedelic freak out and stuff. Um, I think you just have to, if you're in a band or something, like the problem is I'm not, and it's like, even when I was in a band, I never actually got to the point of actually trying to work out what effects to use. It was just like, just try and get through the song. But there must be a place, there's a place for it. Hi, Mr. White Sex, saw you'd uh, just put a video up of, uh, to be honest, I did actually watch it. Well, I put it on, I think I went to the toilet. Uh, I don't remember what you said. It was a, a Charvel. Sounds interesting. Hey, Kenneth, how's it going? Oh. I'm a Sanya recipe. Give me some. I, I, I've never been. I remember hassling my mum to get me my lasagna because I was into uh, Garfield books at the time. So I don't know what age I was then. Um, and she said, oh, I make lasagna quite often, and I also had lasagna, I didn't like it. <laughs> so I've never really been that much of a lasagna fan. <sighs> hey, you can, you can find any butt I thought, remember, I thought, you just basically, see if you just find a Scottish person, someone who sounds like me, and ask them, they'll know. Um, uh, no time for Denmark Street. Uh, Denmark Street was a, wasn't a very, uh, it, was, it was all right. It was kind of nice seeing this at a small, the small shops, I suppose. Kind of like what I'd imagine they're probably very similar to what they were like in the, sort of the 60s and stuff like that. But you just don't really get guitar shops like that anymore. I mean, even, I'm trying to think of any in Glasgow left that are like oldie fashioned -y guitar shops. I don't think there are. Strung Out maybe is a bit like that. Um, but like Merchant City is a bit macro -y. and the same with your guitar guitar with well, guitar guitar and guitar center obviously use the same designer because it might as well be the same shop uh hey jeff how's it going uh, those garfield books were gold back then i used to order them through book orders at school I, me and my pal neil used to my, my dad used to work in sterling and i remember getting the train over there and just basically walking about sterling for the day when you were i don't know it must have been about 12 or something like that how like if you're oh pure excitement um, I remember buying chips for lunch and they were 40 pence. I thought that was quite cheap. And that was a while ago. Um, what was the point about going to? The Garfield books. I, and I found, a, we found a wee sort of gift card shop in the, the, the Sterling Arcade, the Thistle Arcade or whatever it was called. And they had all, the first series of Gar Garfield books, like ones where he's got a slightly different nose like issues numbers one, two, three, four, five, and they were all 99 pence each because they were obviously like maybe 10 years old because I think at the time they were 3.99 for a current level one. And I, I remember buying like six of them. Me and my pal bought like the, the first six. Um, Garfield books, amazing though. So it made, made me the man I am today, Garfield books. <laughs> the real party guitar, um, it's, it's all Tonewood, Mr. White Snake. Um, I even... So basically this, uh, it was missing a couple of strings, so I put strings on it, and also I, in that big box of guitar stuff, there was, I don't know, tongue depressors, and Jen was just going to throw them out, I was like, no, you need them for something. So, and basically that's what I used as a shim, a pure thick-ass shim, but it's, it's acceptable. Um, it's, it's obviously much smaller than a strap. Um, But it's like, why would you, why would you want a wee one? It's kind of. I was playing it earlier on, thinking it's kind of a little bit like see the the old sort of top twenty guitars, the Sakai's, the old Japanese ones that are kind of 
quirky and like Dan Electro's, it's kind of got a little bit of that to it, apart from it's better built. Uh. I was walked back my hate bill. I don't even know what the hate bill is. I'm, I'm scared to look it up. It's just, I think it's a problem, not that it's, it's like the idea is great, but it's just um, badly implemented and there's too many loopholes that people are going to take advantage of. I don't really know. Uh, London might be better now since she left. That was interesting. <laughs> Calvin and Hobbes bring the inner. I don't know what you're talking about there. Um, what's what's Calvin and Hobbes? Um, yeah, but as I said, so this. Um, this mod switch is the first time we've ever done this. This is a switch. See, because the knobs are dead close together, um, there wasn't really enough room for a normal switch. So there was a really thin one. One of the ones, it's like it's only a three. It's only got three lugs on it, so it's thinner. Uh, so it meant I couldn't do my normal cascading bucker switch. But mm. just having the humbucker thing, I think, might actually be better. Plus the switch costs half as much. But it just gives you... Rock. There, in that position. Easily the best guitar, best sound in the guitar. Cheers for spiking those likes. I even I filed the tops of the pickups. They're fantastic. All you need, you just don't. I don't know. I don't know how cheap these things are. Um, but I'm, 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 it's, it's, it's kind of bizarre getting a guitar and things I like is I love the way it's got a maple fingerboard and a painted neck, which you don't often see. Uh, hey, Pontiac! I uh, have HP 30. I'm not, what, what's it? Uh, I know what the HP 35 is the normal one. I don't know what the 30 is. It might be slight, a, a slightly different variant of it. Um, 2004. Last year I made in Korea before I moved to China. Set neck. Hesitant to check out. I don't know if you like the uh, 335s. I'm sure they're pretty good. There are ones that have I got a guitar on the wall that's got the bridge. I don't, but Yamaki made the HP35 at first. I've not got one of them. You can tell them by they've got the the bridge that's on the Falcon. Um, if you can find one of them. Oh! Uh, the, the thing about them is they don't really, I don't think they really show up as really been any more expensive than normal ones. What you're looking for is a bridge like that bridge. If you if you, you see a washburn with that bridge on it, and if the, you know, it's too strong, um, it's a Yamaki built one, and it'll be the best EC5 in the world. I've never actually played one, but I just know it because of the way these things are built. Um, but I have had a, I think it was Chinese, the one I had. I had a, an Aria Pro, not a Washburn. Uh, what's the tuners like? Not that bad. They tuned the guitar. I was really surprised it actually holds tuning fine. And to be honest, okay, the strings are maybe a little bit lighter than normal. It's got tens on it, but not noticeably. I mean, it's one of these things that, like, how many of these guitars actually ever get played? Who who buys this apart from buy it for your daughter to learn to play, like a sort of toy one? Because I mean, you could get it, it doesn't look really any different from. I mean, there's that Washburn Hannah Montana one, which I always thought must be quite good, but my pal Taylor had one. And he said it was awful, and he's just going about how bad it was. He's like, "Do you want to buy it?" <laughs> it was like, eh, "You really shouldn't have told me about it beforehand." I think he bought it for 30 and sold it for 60, to be honest. I remember nearly buying one for it. Was one, there was one on eBay for ages for 29.99. Buy it now, and it kept dropping. It dropped from like 60 and it would down at 20. And I was like, up here, once it's next, I'll buy it, and then it disappeared. But that's more of a sort of, I quite like the look of that. It's kind of like a an idol shape, a little bit like a telecaster layout, telecaster bridge and pickup, and then a sort of less poly type shape. 
pretty cool. But if you can pick up one of these for 20 quid, I mean, the only reason I can think of having this is for the Hello Kitty reason. And, uh, what kind of nut files you use? They are mega expensive. I actually just got new ones, but my nut file is this one, which is the one I've always used up till now. And they're about seven quid, and you can still get them. I can't remember what it was it said on it because it wore off. But this one here, and it comes in a, it comes in this yellow sleeve, and it's like so it's a wee bit rusty now. But it's it's, it's obviously not nut files. It's just a really brutal file. Like basically, see when you're doing the the file, see if you just give it if you really go at it, uh, 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 that's you down to the wood. So you kind of you almost you just rest it itself and run it down, and then it's just basically a case of fidget with it and you can get it but i did get um proper nut files i think they were 25 quid for the set and i did a, I very quickly did a les paul over at jen's and um it seemed to be fine they're going to jpacks you put mod it you know, that's the thing is it's like what's a, i don't want to end up well, another wee red base because the wee red base was great. It was going to be my, my base for just keeping in the book of the car, blah blah blah. And then I changed the bridge because I had one sitting there, and then I changed the pickup because I had the pickup sitting there. And then I, I really liked the wee base, and then I got Jen to paint it. And then because I had it in bits, I put a better bridge on it and a and go to tuners. And then it's now J Pack C, so it's now worth like Every time it's on Facebook, people try and buy it. It's like, oh, that's... people keep saying it's happier. Oh, you've really progressed, and it's like it's the third one ever. Um, so they've, they've not they've not really progressed <laughs> in that way. But I don't want I wouldn't do that with this one anyway. It's not worth doing. Um, it's like the difference between having a wee one for the sake of just having a full size strap is I don't I don't really see I mean, how small your hands are. I mean, it's kind of fun being a wee bit small and. It, it's not that much smaller, though. You know what I mean? It's like for how much you lose, you know. If if it was half physically half the size and felt the same, but it's not. It's only, you know, it's only that shorter and kind of weighs the same. And dare say it's just not as good as a. I'll just get a get a square strap. <sighs> Don't get back to JPAC. Yeah, no, I'm not going to. I, I, I don't really want to mod it either because what's the point of spending money on it? Everyone on it works. I could maybe mod it by getting a trem arm. I was thinking like, it doesn't have one. I know it's, I could probably get one that fits, but if I maybe have to angle grind the end off it to make it a bit shorter, maybe I'll just do that. But it's kind of, I'm surprised at how well it's actually holding tune and actually been all right. You just have to be a little bit lighter touched with it. Um, I need to dig out a wee Flying V. I've got a Greg Bennett Flying V, which I think is a 20, it's a 21 inch scale. And I just, it just can't, it's just that, there's a point you just can't go beyond, you know what I mean? And it's like, that's, this is still above that point where it becomes an issue. But you got a Charvel, you got a Squire, yeah, but I mean, there you go, it's like, you can play that, is it, so is it better than a Roadster then? <laughs> the Charvel, right, Jim? Uh, Charvel Multiverse. See the price of those Stumac? Yes, I know. Anyway, I'd really need to clean a slot of slight birds that are ruining tuning. Yeah, just get one of them. Get that. Um, John, Look, just look up eBay. Get it from China. I think it was about seven bucks. And it's just, it looks exactly the same as this. It's just a really aggressive, very thin on the edge. And it's just really good for just doing exactly what you're saying there. Um, and it's seven quid. And it's a useful file to have anyway. Um, Rather than spending, I mean, I think that set of files I've got through there, I think Jen looked them up and it was 25 or 30 quid, but they're not having a good file makes a big difference. I've got these, being, uh, I don't really need the two of them. That file there is just the best file in the world. That I've got one of those triangular ones as well. But that one, I just need that one. I just need a very simple but good file to do a print job. Don't need any of the fancy ones. We've also got one of these. Actually, there's one in uh, like a fret crowning one as well. That was about 14 quid. It was nice. So it's, it's, a, it's an expensive thing. It's a like, thing with tools. It's like, you know, it's just like, I suppose it's the same with guitars. It's like the expensive ones are just nicer to hold and use. <laughs> uh, uh, 
plays very well. You actually get value for money with the Charvels, probably possibly. I don't know. It's like I've got a Charvel neck that doesn't quite fit that roadster body I've got. Um like a, a Japanese Charvel, they only made it for one year, and it's like I need to find something to put it on. I just don't know that much. Um fancy fancy uh, Chevy, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's just a fender, though, isn't it? Is it not just a, a Mexican fender? Apart from to Charvel specs. It's mm. plastic cash on, the, on an odd LP custom. Sight unseen. Scar brand and heavy. There's 400 series style fretboard normally used by Gibson Custom Shop. Be interesting to see what shows up. Ah, well. Have fun with it. You can tell if it's a good... If it's a... If it's a good guitar, then... Regardless of whether it's like a pure, you know, expensive thousands of dollar ones, unless you put it. They're failing me here, of course. A Jarville, yes. Yeah, I, I, I still, I, I, I get confused with which Jack, the Jackson and Jarville thing. Because they were both, you got Jackson Jarvels, didn't you? And actually, the Charvel I've got the the logo on the headstock, and the headstock itself is like a Jackson pointy thing, and it's got the is it toothpaste they call it, the Charvel you know the big massive logo that's just, just basically the same as the one that says Jackson apart from it says Charvel Gibson to a Garvel I don't know did, I, I, I don't know when, when did Charvels come out they don't really I've kind of missed them Jacksons and Charvels I've kind of missed out I don't have any I've got a few guitars that look a bit like them I've got an Aria Pro rock seat rock device that's uh it's like a, a, a charvel um timeless i don't know I, I, I don't know i've never really played one that's made me go oh that's a, a jackson or a charvel i've had no it's a kramer i've got i've never played a jackson that's really been oh yeah and they're nice they're good i mean they're good guitars there's just something about them that don't really i don't know is it because of their point? I don't know why I don't like them. Although I do, my pal did have a Jackson Kelly. I think that's a great looking guitar. And there's one of all the guitars, you know, I'm not buying any more guitars. I don't need any more guitars. There's a Jackson Kelly with a, it's called Iri, Iridescent paint job on it. <laughs> I'd maybe want to buy one of them. <laughs> Framer. Framus. <laughs> I guess if I used to be a rock metalhead in the front row, then the flight from London. Joey Tempest, his family was sitting. Is he really a UK citizen these days? You should have gone and talked to him. He's, he's, he's brilliant. Um, he, he would have been like, he would have sang Final Countdown for you. Uh, of a guy we met him outside, uh, what do you call it? Outside the ABC in Glasgow. We were playing a gig there. And he, he was a wee bit hidey widey. But then once once he realised he wasn't actually getting mobbed, it was just cool folk. There were there were a couple of sort of goth chicks who were mobbing him, but respective respectively, you could you kind of, his attitude changed. He was kind of like, oh, and then the, the, the screaming mob came over, and then you could just see him go, Haha, I can deal with these ones. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> hey, Andy, how's it going? Ah. Playing a manly guitar tonight. Got it in Blucky Earn this morning. I've never... You get... I remember seeing old Framus acoustics and stuff when I started playing the guitar. Never actually... I think they, I think they might have made cheap ones at one point. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I, to be honest, I don't know anything about them. It's one of those ones that... You hear people talking about a lovely old Framus, but you just don't see them for nothing. Uh, let me put on my wee flying V. Have you got a wee V as well? <laughs> yeah, I've got a wee V. A Greg Bennett one, but I, I, I should just sell it. The thing is, it's like I bought it, and then I, there was folks selling them. For some reason, it was only the flying V. There was a Les Paul one, which was like 150 quid new. But for some reason, the wee flying V was 250. So I should just sell it, but I just I kind of feel a bit because that's what they sell for, that's what they sold for a few years ago. Um, I just feel it's like, you know, someone said offered me 250 for this, you're like, you don't really get much guitar for 250 quid, man, you know what I mean? You can get a much better one. 
Uh, that's why I, can't, I struggle selling Liz Pauls. What's the most manly song? What about oh, what was I playing earlier on? Uh, more manly than that. Barracuda. <laughs> I'll make you famous. Oh, you're you're. Nah, I like that. I'll make, I'll make you famous, young guns too. Yeah. Ah. Hey, Steve. Vintage V fifty two icon series. Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure what uh the V fifty two one is. Is that the SG? But all, all the vintage guitars seem to be amazing. Apart from the first one I ever played, which was terrible, it was a a white SG, like the three pickup one. It was just. Ooh, I don't know what it was. It was wrong with it. Um. There was something funny about the neck join, but I've had other the SG shape ones since then, and they weren't like that. They were just like a normal one. I don't know what I can't remember exactly what was wrong with it, but it was just like a pure nope. Oh, wish you the weavy. Oh. Oh, it's, it's, by, it's by a builder repair. All right. So it's probably quite a good guitar. It'll be like a something. I, oh. Tell, look, sorry, Kit Kat's tellies ain't manly. Like, I'm not a huge Bruce Springsteen fan, right? But that Born in the USA thing where he's got the jeans and the white vest on and the beat-up Telecaster with... Is that a baseball cap sticking out his back pocket? That's pretty fucking manly. Um, no, it's pretty manly. <laughs> was it? Is a Telecaster? Is it? Is no, either one? Is it, that's the black one or the white one? Is either one of them more manly than this? This is a strap. Uh, <sighs> Oh, a Telecaster? That'll be amazing. I don't think I've ever actually played a vintage Telecaster, but it'll be, it'll be brilliant. Um, yeah. When you pay 100 for I do it, do it. Uh. Uh. It's like that's an SG note. <laughs> Tellies ain't manly. Really? I think you just bought one. It's an oily rag, is it? Really? It's like, it's like pure, yeah, you just get an oily rag because you've just been 
cleaning down the V8 or something. Uh, yeah, totally. Smoking a fag, drinking a beer, polishing the V8, the manifold. Yeah. Uh, he was working in the garage. <laughs> Your buddy left a new Charvel at your house. Oh, how's your, so your, how are you getting on with your band then, Mr. White? Um, still talking to him and they're willing, willing to leave your... They're probably, it's because you fidget about with guitars, he's probably hoping that you're going to adjust the trust rod or something like that. Uh, you bought a telly. I tell, no, tellies are... I, think, I don't think he's... No. Ideally, it should be the first guitar everyone has should be a telly. But nobody wants that for the first guitar. Um, they want a strap because they want a whammy bar. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a point, I think, when you get a bit older, you start liking. Uh, tastes change. I was always just SG. was the only guitar I ever wanted to play. Um, ever. And I just got the one. Okay, I, I, a couple of shake, a couple of guitars I didn't like, and then I got my Epiphone SG, which I was quite happy with. And then I got the Gibson SG, and then that was me. I didn't need any more guitars. I had the one I wanted. Why would you want to play anything else? Um, but I don't. Um, I still, I still think it's pretty. I still, it's probably my initial impact was it was the coolest looking guitar because you could get it in the sixties, but it looked pure evil as well. It's the most evil of the early guitars, I think. Oh, got a VE one thousand with two Seymour Hunker and Hot Rails. You got overdrive. Stick a, a tap in it because I bet you the Hot Rails are. are I mean, even the, the cheapy Hot Rails you get, see them when you call split them, they sound brilliant. Um, because that's kind of what they're designed for, um, but definitely cost split them. Real men play tellies, they do, yeah. But I, would, I mean, obviously, even more menly men play a uh, candy rocks and pink, then play ABBA on it. Yeah. Hey, Ribbon, how's it going? Uh, and the Gibson SG was amazing, felt like a rock star. Yeah, I don't know why I kind of... Again, the SG is like I had it, and it was that one, and I never got another SG. I had Obviously, I had a couple in that I uh, you know, bought to, to sell on, just like Epiphone ones, a Bucky one and stuff like that. Um, and then about two years ago or something, I got, uh, because it was so cheap, a 50s, a 50s tribute or a, 60, a 50s tribute. One which had 24 frets, and it was like it, the guy had tried to relic it, so it was pure cheap, and it was amazing. It was the lightest guitar I've ever played. I really, really liked it. Um, I just figured I would never, why would I have another SG? It wasn't as good as my red one. Um, and then I got an offer for a swap where I ended up getting it that orange amp free uh, and a couple hundred quid for a couple hundred quid outlay, so I couldn't say no. Um, Place where I tried an Epiphone wasn't quite the same. It depends which Epiphone you get, but yes, um, there's something about the Gibson ones. But uh, got Hot Rails order for the Squire. I was looking; you can still get Hot Rails cheap on eBay, and they're good. The ones you get, they're like I need. I'm, I'm sure I used to be able to get them for like five pound eighty. You know, spend all night looking for them to save twenty pence. Now they're about seven or eight quid. You can get it delivered and get a Hot Rail, and they're just so versatile. See if you've got a guitar that's got a weird string space and a hot rail does it and you can split it down if you if it's a vintage guitar and just use half of it you know what I mean but it just like they fit in holes that other guitar, other pickups don't fit in and it's all you need uh, and they're totally amazing for basses as well if you fancy having a bit of a another bass sound just flop it in your bass with so the bar magnet thing as long as the strings are within that bar you're amazing amazing for 12 stringers as well but I can't I, I really can't I need to buy if I could see if there was a chop option to buy them much cheaper if I bought 10 I'd probably buy them because I'd put them in everything they're freaking amazing um, oh. real men wear stockings in their hands while caressing the fret I'm wearing stockings on my feet yes I know I know the, I know the, the tights um, I don't actually have any tights so i um, Oh, no. Someone gave me some Ernie Ball extra slinky eights. I actually had a 
a couple of Les Pauls and there was a, a, like a, a, a Chipson one and I can't remember what the other mate was. I was messing about uh, swapping the pickups over and they had eights on them and it wasn't that bad. It was basically, wasn't it? It was like this, actually. So eights on a Les Paul are about the same as tens on a Candy Rocks short scale or 22 and a half inch scale. They're a wee bit bendy, but not. In some ways, it's quite good playing with thin strings because it means that you have to be more accurate. You realise you don't need to push down as hard. Even with high, with um, thicker strings, you always end up pushing down harder than you have to. Uh, it just seems a bit wrong. Oh. The fretboard and the headphone took the skin off your fingers. Oh, the fret, the fret ends, you mean? Yeah. I mean, the fret ends of this aren't great. But it's like, I guess it's down to it. Is it really, what's the... Is it worth spending the amount of time on it? I mean, obviously, a guitar like this, I mean, I, I'm assuming this is, like, probably more than 100 quid, I think. I'm, I'm sure the one Jen's got has got, like, a pink gig bag and a, a purple lamp that goes with it. Um... But I mean, it's like, if you're buying a guitar for £100 or £150, you've not spent any time doing the work. Frets, put frets in, next. You know I mean, there's no, nobody's gone over it. Or they've maybe gone over it with a file along the top. I keep thinking it's got binding, but it doesn't. I like it. Oh. I wish there were more cheap Vs and Explorers. Bulk Hogan's still an amazing name. Um, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, it's one of those things that you're not going to have a lot of these, but I mean, like, like a proper V like that, it's amazing. You do you do get them. I've sold a couple, which I shouldn't have fucking sold. You get Westfield ones and uh, Stag ones that are basically they're fine. Okay, they're maybe bolt on neck, but I mean that doesn't make any difference. The 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 way the S, the way the flying V is, it's like there's enough wood behind where it is to put a bolt on in it like that. It's just the same shape as a Gibson one, apart from it's a bolt on neck. Um, Oh. <laughs> oh. Jimmy Page top it by shoes, lighter strings. Yeah, but I mean, it's, in some ways, I like going back. Sometimes it's quite nice. It's sometimes a bit liberating going back to the heavier strings because you don't have to be as accurate. It's really nice. Uh, I do eights and a 23, three, 23, three quarters, and sevens and a 25. Low effort to play. Well, 24 and three quarter, I think you mean. Um, yeah. Gibson's 24 and three quarter. But yeah, I think that's, that's the same thing. So you've got the same you've got the same tension in both of them. That's the thing if you put, well, I've, I've never actually tried it. If you put 10s on a Gibson and 9s on a Strat, they're both the same tension because there's a, the length. There's, I'm sure there's some sort of thing. I remember selling a guitar to a guy who was into Sonic Youth. And he'd, he'd sold, I'd done it up and I think I got 200 quid for it or something like that. It was one of these, those wee Sakai ones I was talking about. You know, they're kind of, Quirky, you know, the, the bridge is just a bar. I think I might have put a tunematic bridge on it because the bridge was missing. But uh, you know, one of these sort of things, the guys are up here, yeah, I'm tuning it. And he, the, the tuning he was going to use was FFFFFCF or something like that. It was all F. So I was like, really? Is it how? What's the twist? It kind of do? how do you get strings? He's like, up here. You can make any length of string any note just by choosing the right thickness of string, and it's like pure. He worded it better than that. I can't remember his exact words, but it was pure Gandalfian, and it's pure, yeah. So you can make any scale play whatever note you want. It's just a case of getting the right thickness of string. Yeah. So I can't quote. I can't remember who the guy was either. So it's like you know. last guitar I bought. I should have had a stocking over my head. Go, Jeff. What was it? <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Use 14s because you're manly as fuck. You're playing a fucking an Epiphone Les Paul. How manly is that? That's the girly guitar. My God. Especially when you've got the easy to use tuners because you just, oh, I don't want sore fingers having to turn stiff tuners. I'm going to get Grover's. So. Harley Benton SG Junior for 160 a few weeks. Surprisingly good. The frets are spot on. I, I don't know. Possibly. I mean, I don't know. Was that just brand new, Bill? Um, just call you bulk. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the thing. It just comes down to it. it's like, ah, uh, maybe not, but I, I don't really want 160 quid. I mean, okay, I, this, this we're going back 20 years. I paid that for I paid 215 
for my Epiphone SG. Um, it's not a, the special, or it's not the junior, but I did eventually end up putting P90 sized humbuckers in it. Uh, top bender, yeah. It's like, it's sort of, I'm not a big bender, but I mean, sometimes it is. I'm just happy, just, I don't need to go more than that, whatever that is. Like two steps. I'm not ready to go more than two steps. Um. Oh. <laughs> Homosexual telly player with a stutter. I don't know. Alan the Bastard. <laughs> I forgot about Alan the Bastard. Yes. So it says Alan in the back. Don't bother. Alan's quality control. It's a red Stratocaster. Next. <laughs> it's like, yes, it is a black acoustic guitar. Past. Next. This is like, bro. No. Failed. This is a P bass and it clearly says mandolin on the, the order. Failed. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Um, so, yeah. It does say strat, but telly. Yeah, close enough. Maybe they won't notice. Hmm. That's like a strap on joke. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you can get tellies with B benders in them, but I don't know. I wasn't really going to go there either. Um... Fourteens on your native pin argument. The thing is, I mean, these guitars were designed to have like twelves, or not modern guitars, but the original strats and tellies. Twelves was the norm. Um, I think. I, I think. I don't think you got any lighter than twelves. Um, I think that was just that was light gauge. I think you got higher than that. Um, so they were kind of designed for that. That's why you get you know people want their staggered pole pieces because the of the wound G string and shit like that. And you still got to have the strap with that, even though you're not using the wide G string. So it's that string's quieter than all the others. It's like, you know. um, uh, I put it was a guild SG. I I remember them kicking about. Was it the guy? Not super tramp. Black Hole Sun, uh, Soundgarden. Did he not have a green? I remember my pal used to have um, MTV. And he was always, he was always putting on, or that song was always on when I was around the Black Hole Sun one, and he was playing a green, but it wasn't quite an SG. It's kind of oh, nearly. Um, it's like the first guitar I ever played. I think it was a Marlin Sidewinder. I do remember getting a shot of a. Ah, an electric guitar, it was a strat, it no amp or anything like that when I was about 10. And I was like, Well, I wondered why it was it, it wasn't in tune or anything like that. So I didn't nobody could play it, it was just around up at the, the chalet site. That that was it. But then the first time I ever played, I think it was a Marlin Sidewinder. It was it was bad. It was a bad guitar, it was really heavy. I think my pal might have been an acoustic, but it was the electric guitar somehow. You got me. And then I bought a Strat and it was rubbish. And then I bought my acoustic and it was good. Phantom Green Gil Polara. Yes, that Gil, Gil Polara. That's, a, that's a, good, a good name. I like I like Polara as a name. I wonder if I should give the... Why is it stuck tuner? It's probably not even out of tune. I'm not, I'm not learning this tuner yet. You, know, you often wonder, see my, um, my old fashioned tuner map. I've got it through next door now. The, the old Arian one is basically, it was just three LEDs. A green one, and then in the middle, and then a red one on either side. And if basically, if the green one was lit, you were in tune enough. You could be really accurately in tune by having just the green light lit, but as long as the green light was on, you were laughing. There's this one I'm not quite sure about yet. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe it's because I'm, I'm playing a weird scale guitar as well. <laughs> Two hours is no. piano sounds the best. Tanglewood Outlaw. It's a good name. Um, I like the tango. The best Tanglewood was the bass, though. The Rebel. I was like that. It's like Echo 3 to Echo Bass. It's like the Rebel Bass. We found the Rebel Bass. Like, yeah. Um, I don't think it's actually called that. In Sunburst. I don't know what a Tanglewood Outlaw is. It sounds like an acoustic. So I've got this question at the Lancaster. Some twelves. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, to be honest, I've never really, I've never re experimented. I was trying to have, I did buy 12. See if you've got those wee, like the shorter scale than this guitars. Uh, you can put 12s on them and they work. You know, the, the, wee, the wee one you get, you're, you're, you're bound to end up buying one at a charity shop for a fiver at some point. You know, the one that's got a speaker in it. And it's just, it's like a 19 inch scale. It just can he do E. It can do E if you put like 12s or 13s or something. And sometimes if you go into guitar shops and you look at these obs obscure strings, nobody, they're like 10 year old, no one's ever bought them. And they're like, they've still got the price ticket from 1999 on it. So it's like, oh, $2.99 for a set of 14s. There we go. That's great. And it's like the guy's like, Pure. <sighs> wow. It's like the company's not been in operation for years. Track up. So I, I'm all for see stupidly light like guitars. I don't. There's something to be said for them. This isn't light. This is too heavy. Same with the wee red bass. See that we um gear for music, short scale bass, which was basically just the, the modern version of the wee red bass. It weighed nothing, and it's like it, it just it's basically just the same apart from it weighed nothing. And it's like really, if you're talking about having what I wanted the wee red bass for, which was basically keeping in the boot of the car going out the boat or whatever, you know, just having a taking to parties. Having one that weighs nothing is a big thing. It makes a huge difference. I always remember going into the studio when I used to be in, and you would take a bottle of Bucky and it's like you put it in your gig bag on your back and it would just be like pure, it would okay, it's it's a bottle of Bucky, but what a difference that made to the weight of a guitar. It's like it's the lightest guitar and the heaviest guitar I've got, it's only a bottle of Bucky between them. <sighs> Pig nose battery powered, they're terrible. I, I had one and I could not get a sound out of it that I found was acceptable at all. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe it, it was fucking rubbish. The one. I had to be pick as a nose as well. You know, the, the wee leathery one. Oh, no, it was it was a bad. It's better than, I suppose it's better than not being heard, but in the t I mean, that exists. The Roland Cube and it's a hundred times better in every way, apart from it doesn't have the the knob that's shaped like a pig's nose, but no, I could I couldn't get a sound out of it. And I'm I'm one for trying to get a, a sound out of a wee shitty amp. I love to try to get a, a sound out. I couldn't get it to work at all. It was terrible. Um what's the best guitar? Best guitar is a corker. So actually I'm gonna say that this kind of reminds you see when you're looking at it because it's got this um maple stripe which kind of looks like binding even though it's not it's just a fingerboard the corker kind of has that apart from it's obviously in a different league it's got like a it's got like two double binding on top of the maple fretboard that sticks through. That's the best guitar in the world. It's also the prettiest. When I first saw it, I wasn't sure. But the more you look at it, the better it gets. And then it's that shot there to see that it's actually one piece of burrow walnut, walnut all the way through. Look at that neck joint. Never seen anything like it. Yes. So that's getting new strings. That's going to get elixirs, I think. Or maybe just more expensive strings, just because it deserves them. Also, I'm annoyed about the fact that you can see. No, that's I'm not like against Rangers or um, <laughs> the Union Jack, but if you can see the Roto Sound strings, the strings are blue, white, and red, blue, white, and red, and you can see them in this guitar. So I want ones that you can't don't have color on it to keep it monochrome. Uh, Sorry, the chat. The chat's getting going. I need to put down this crap guitar soon at some point. Oh. The best guitar. I don't know. I mean, it's like Encore make really good guitars. 
for I mean you're talking about best you're talking about you can probably I mean the last one I bought was it the last time I went to Blocky and it was 12 quid okay I did have to strip it and uh, paint it and fix it but those are good guitars and honestly if you're talking about oh bargainous it's like oh you can get a Harley Benton for I don't know what the cheapest Harley Benton is 100 quid something like that the encores are way better than that um, they're just better guitars if you can fit well and most of them they're not all brilliant there's actually there's a a telecaster in edinburgh which i had to intentionally not go and buy it was only 30 quid but it's edinburgh to go and pick up a 30 pound guitar an encore blaster telecaster but it doesn't have a it's got like a strat headstock it's kind of put me off a wee bit oh. Do you remember the Laney linebacker? Yes, I did. My first amp was a, I wasn't a line, was it a linebacker? It was very similar though. It was in the same container, but mine had a, they changed the colour from, the linebackers have got a red stripe. Mine was more of a sort of white logo on it. Maybe more that era. I think it had that badge on it. I think they changed the logo and mine had maybe that on it. It was like a 30 watt wee thing. It was fine. I've actually got a, it's not a linebacker. I've got a 30 watt PV kicking about, uh, not PV Laney. It's, it's, it's something metal or something. It's called Grind something, something like that. But it's basically just the same one, but it's got a distortion channel on it. Uh. Oh. Rick Baffert paid 14. <laughs> yeah, that's a real matter. There's nothing more when you get repetitive to strains, really. But it's the thing is, it's just like, imagine how do you just. With 14s for three hours a night, every night for 50 years. So, I mean, no wonder he was like, uh... it was a, a distortion. No. That pedal. Weight on this, 2.9. No, more than that. Uh, 2.9 is a very light guitar. 2.9 is anything under 3 is like, oh my God, that's a light guitar. Yeah. It's, it's, it's enough to for a, a camp. Ooh, it's very heavy. That's light. Um, uh, a Bucky is a Scottish measurement of weight. Yes. Yeah, it's about two bottles of Bucky. Uh, Bo here. As a Scottish measurement, that is. Um, yeah, but it's like, there's a, how many bohiers? I mean, bohiers a distance, buckies a weight, isn't it? Or a volume? Uh. Oh. DR handwound. I, I know you get uh, the only DR strings I've ever seen are the ones that people say are pure terrible, like the glow in the dark ones for the basses. Um, 33 today. So you're 33. Well done. Happy birthday. You need to get yourself a Telecaster. You've already got one. Yeah, you need to like to play ABBA on it. You get to that age now. One decibel, one BH is clearly understood subdivision, but it's called music. The folk. Okay, yeah, it's all right. I like cheap quality guitars that can take a beating. Yeah, but I mean that's, that's the thing is that's what it comes down to. It's like getting a guitar that's actually reasonable. That's where something like you know the roadster comes in, and it's like there just isn't a guitar in the world that's twice as good as the roadster. There's better guitars, but there's not one that's twice as good as one that's working fine, assuming that yours is as good as mine. It's like, yeah, I mean, you, but you could go to anyone, go to Paul Reed Smith, and I want you to make a guitar that's twice as good as this. Is that twice? Twice as good? You can't make it twice as good. What does, does it, you know what I mean? Um, uh, three, three of the old firm. Was there a Rangers and Celtic game on today? I'm that into football. I don't care. Um, that's quite a lot of goals for a game of football, though. Who was winning at the end? Who was who? Who, who scored the last goal? Because that would be the that would be the better team. It'd be shit being the one that's got to score the first the first one to get to three. Uh. You're just like pure, oh my god, we're winning 3 0. Yeah, and then suddenly 10 minutes later, it's 3 2. Oh no, fuck. 3 3. Oh no, you just be shitting it. That'd be terrible. Um...
best trying to Alexa Polly web, totally agree. Um, but again, it's got to come into the what strings do I buy when well, I've been using IT? I get a, I get a deal on the roto sounds, which are all right. Um, they're not as good as Elixirs, but I can get how much are Elixirs these days? They're about 15 quid, so I can get four or five sets of which. If you know, it's like it depends what it is you're doing. It's worth it for some guitars. That's what I mean. I'm, I'm, I used to I used to invest in them. I mean, that guitar there still got elixirs on it, and it must be three years old, and it still plays amazing, which is more can be said for all the other ones. So, as a long term investment, they're totally worth it. I used to elixir all my guitars, um, but then I started getting lazy because I get this deal about getting you know paying a decent amount for roto sounds. It's just like, and then I get cheaper ones. Um, The Tony Bob, both sides. <sighs> yeah, but Polyweb are the better ones. Those are the ones that have got the really thick coating on them. So you get Nanoweb, which are the normal ones. Polyweb, which are normally about a pound or two more and harder to get because they're basically exactly the same string but with twice as much coating on it. And one which was new probably a couple of years ago was OptiWeb, which was in between the two. It was kind of not quite as thick as... Hang me. Uh... I love them for stuff on bass. Missed the attack at top end, but they feel amazing. I only ever bought one set of Roto Sound bass strings, and um, I, I I didn't rate them. Uh, I I don't know what was wrong with them. Um, I think it was just a, I was reeling from the price. It was like forty quid a set or something, forty five quid. It's like I don't know. Um, New toe strings are good low tension if your string fingers are getting older. Just oh, surely low tension just means thinner strings. I totally get that. It's also good for um, if you've got like a particularly vintage guitar, probably not so much an electric with a truss rod, but you know, like an acoustic or something like that, maybe string it light so you're not putting as much tension on the soundboard and stuff like that. Um, uh, don't watch sports ball. I don't watch football. I hate football too. Uh, Morton. <laughs> yes. I know where Morton is. Uh, Bamton fans, do you do what you I think I'm missing something. What's £15 a set? Oh, flat wounds. Um, oh, no. Uh, Elixirs. Yes. I mean, I'd basically, I get put off a lot, but I used to be able to get a really good deal. And it was a guy in Clyde Bank. It was like a shop, but there wasn't a shop in Clyde Bank, but it used to, it was like a sort of just an internet shop that only sold. To be honest, I think it was just a, maybe a retired guy who just got fed up paying that amount for Elixir, so was basically just bought a pallet of them or just bought them by the box and then sold them for a pound less than anyone else. But because he was just selling them on eBay, it kind of worked in. Um, I used to get them off him, and it was they were great. And then I, was, I moved to a shop in Rotherham, and then I couldn't find them, and it ended up such a hunt because there was so many fake ones, you know, to try and get ones that are coming from a shop. You know, it's like, oh, how many stars? Not 56, which they all seem to have, you know, 10,000 things because it's just a, a guitar shop that's been in Manchester for 20 years, you know what I mean? One of those things. Women's volleyball, beach volleyball. Uh, Mr. White's take, hey, Papa Blue. A short scale jag bass. Nice. Yes. That's the. I, I remember seeing them cheap and never understanding why they were so cheap. And then I haven't seen them. I remember seeing them. Maybe it was the same one. I've never seen them for 120, 150 quid second hand, like a couple of years ago, and thinking, uh, it's like, it seems like an awful good buy. Um, that's one of those guitars was, um, from the range that there never was a Jaguar bass until the Squire one. So it's kind of like, if it was 1965 when we've just brought out the Jaguar, if Fender brought out a bass, what would it look like? Like that. But I think it looked cool. Uh, hey, you'll get me back. We're all ladies volley fans. Oh, Gage is torn out. You're going to use eights. Um, Mr. Whitesnake, what's that? Is that, um, that's a, I take it, is that, 
because that's on. Is that you? The badge. I need to try and find that. Look, that's that's that's, that's on the trust rod cover of the corker. See, look, and that's spooking you that way around, is it? See, it's got like a a Saturn or a Jupiter, whatever it is. There's someone that took an awful lot of time to engrave that on there. Ah. Oh. Uh, music shop Perth. I don't, uh, I don't think I've ever been to the music shop in Perth. But yeah, no, that, that's that's the way to do it. Um, I don't know. In fact, I, 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 I did get stung one time. I, I was greedy and tried to buy a lot of them at one point. You know, I tried to buy half a dozen sets. You know, it ended up being it was like, oh, it was only 40 quid for half, half a dozen sets and they were fake. So, you know, if, if it sounds too good to be true, it's too good to be true because obviously it costs exactly the same to print out a very, very good-looking elixir packet as it does to print out an, an Ernie Ball packet or something like that, and then you just put shite strings in it, the ones that cost 50 pounds. Um, I'm going to, going to have a fag and to find my wee box thing. Where is it? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Torres in the fingers. Yeah, it's in there. It's in there. It's, in, it's only in two of its fingers, though. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the short scale base. I think it, it's almost one of those things that you have to be a bit better to play a short scale base because they're not as forgiving. They do sound good, but I, I think it's if you were a beginner, I would almost suggest going the other way. You can work your way through it. If you can learn to play a short scale without buzzing when you get a short of a man scale bass, it's like pure, oh, this is so much easier because you, you don't, you're don't you not limited by how hard you can hit the strings. You can just thump them. Tony's oh. all you feeling. <sighs> Perth isn't a real Perth isn't a real place it is, I've been there the Perth ah. uh. I'm trying to think when the last time I was in Perth where was I going to I can't remember I'm left handed but without flexing <laughs> Oh. oh, play right handed are my favorite bass is a music man stingray fully active with a fresh battery i've never really got the hang of the active pickups um i do like the there's a vintage the brand stingray bass which is excellent i really like it selling guitar sucks it's really difficult i don't see the just Arseholes, basically. You know, it's like, it's like you're selling your Squire Strat, and it's like, yeah, and there's photos of it. And like, Is this a Japanese one? And you're like, second photo shows you the bit in the back where it says made in China. You know, it's just like, oh. Oh. I could, that's it. Just, I don't know, you just get used to it. I'm, I'm, I'm now used to playing this wee guitar. Uh, and I think it's I think it's a good thing to play other things as well, just to be able to switch between them. Um, my new sire, short scale, I had to break 37 years playing bass. Wow. Uh I've never tried the Sire. I just think it's a really bad name. Uh, it's so close to Squire, and they're the same price that they're basically trying to compete with Squire. So it's like, why do you just 
They should have just released like a, a, a line of instead of a defender shape, they should be like the Gibson and called them Epiphanies. Do you know what I mean? Fuck it, why not? Uh, I don't know if I'd ever spend a weekend there. <laughs> What's the title of the song of that disco bass riff you were playing over and over a few weeks ago? I was playing lots of disco bass over and over. Uh, I don't know. I, I like playing um, Miss You. Um, I was playing a little. That's it, there you go. Oh, yeah, it's Mishu by the Stones. Uh, look it up on YouTube and uh, make sure it's the 12-inch disco mix. Because it's got a big breakdown. It's been like, ah, yeah, some sexy girls. We've got a case of wine, which is dying to meet ya. Ooh, ah, ah. Yeah, hey, baby. Yeah, that's great, man. <laughs> Perfect if you've made the short run for Big Girl, dear. Uh, our friend's right says, Abba Dancing Queen. Abba D Dancing Queen is just about the only not good Abba song, I think. I was always of, of the opinion of, oh, Abba, I'd have got some great songs with some shite ones, and it's like the more I hear them. I mean, even earlier on, I was in I was in the block end market. It was like, the winner takes it all. Dun, dun. It's fucking heavy as fuck. Uh, Dancing Queen's about the only one I don't like, I think. <laughs> What's it called? I don't know, the song I have, the Stones. I miss you. Persephone Rover's car. I heard this, I keep, I keep seeing this. Um, she said you played funk level. Jesus, how could you, if you could play funk jazz in level 42 and you didn't play the bass for 37 years, wow. Um, Obviously, it's one of those things that I suppose I could really hammer myself in to actually learn to play like that if I really wanted to, but I can't be bothered. I don't really like it that much. But I'd love to be able to do it. Cup of Super Trooper. Tupa, Tupa, but I'm gonna find you. Yeah. <laughs> Any body M? All, all, all the body M's. have not heard, I honestly, Kit Kats never know it exists, I'll know to avoid it, that sounds absolutely hor horrendous. Uh, I need to, you still can't get, see, talking about Bonnie M. Rasputin, the record, my mum and dad's record, the album's called Night Flight to Venus, Rasputin has like a five minute intro called Night Flight to Venus, about like a space thing, and it pure from about three minutes before the end of this five minutes, it starts doing the ding, 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 and it pure builds up forever until it just seamlessly goes into ding, 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 ding. At that point, fucking amazing. Um, it's so worth listening to, and it's not on YouTube. You can't get it as one song. It's totally part of it. It's totally part of it. Honestly, Jim, stick it on and fucking love it. Night flight to Venus. Our systems are go boom boom. Digga 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 boom boom boom. Digga 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 boom. Then you hear it the EQ changes when the snares kind of come out up in the mix. It goes digga 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 digga, and that's when Rasputin starts. Fucking amazing. I'd love to do a metal verse of that. Andy was on earlier on. 
disco version of Snowblind. Picture the cover, so yeah, uh, that was one of the, one of those great records. First time I ever heard that song, it fucking blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. all my pals knew it. Like, what do you mean you've never heard Rasputin? And I was just sitting in the car like that. Ah, ah, fucking, this is the most amazing thing I've ever heard. It was like your Boney M. I've got a Boney M record, my mum and dad's record collection, and it was that one. Oh, rah, rah, Rasputin, space friend of the death machine. Rah, rah, Rasputin, love of Russia's greatest love machine. Yeah. <laughs> oh. A couple of 14, 50 year old guys in spandex. You're there. Uh, there you got a mullet as well. You need to grow that back. I bet you were kicking yourself when you tried to do it, man. I hope it is. Is that your band consists of two people that play the guitar? That's uh, that's that's bad, man. You want to get easily. Like, ideally, you want to be. The only guitarist in the band, so you want somebody who plays the drums. A bass player who knows a drummer, pal, that's who you want to find. Um. Was it the date? That's because it's like pure. Uh, obviously, that album also has um, New Young Heart of Gold. I want to live, I want to live, I want to give, I want to give. I've been a man, I've been a son of gold. Bam, check, 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 check. Fucking great. That's a cover. New Young Heart of Gold by Boney M on that album. <clears throat> Boney M was legit, it was Milli Vanilli. Well, I did they were, they were like, so there's still one that guy who did it, and it was like fucking the songs are pure brilliant. And okay, the the guy with the afro wasn't actually didn't, never actually sang. He was a dancer slash performer, as were two of the girls. One of the girls who's Scottish, you know that? No way. One of those. One of the girls in Boney M was Scottish. What the fuck are you looking through? It and it's like pure exotic name, exotic name, Liz Liz Mitchell, and you're like. That'll be Liz Mitchell then. She'll be the Scottish one, uh, apparently. <laughs> She's the one that actually sang all the parts. Um, oh. <laughs> Marco's undiagnosed ADD. What's AD? Attention, this attention dead. There's not an H in it. An H in there. Uh, uh, got drums, bass, and synthetic. So that synthesizer, nice. Fucking sounds amazing. What's the last thing? Need to get some jams on the go. Oh. Yeah, so I totally can't remember that. Um, I think it's just the wrong first pedal, that's right. If we went to Winnipeg. I don't know where you're going, but I guess you're going to be in something. I can maybe even work out the, the arpeggios because I've got the the album for that. Is it 1987 by Whitesnake? And if you're from the UK and you went, oh, 
not at the time, but if you're like in the in the nineties, thinking like that, there's what's that cheesy white snake song? Oh, that's from that nineteen eighty seven. That's the big hit. I'll buy that record. Get it home. Not on it. It's on the CD. But I'd, so I had to buy the twelve inch single, which looks the same. I think it was fifty pence to be honest, and it's got about four different versions of it, and one of them has heavy, heavy arpeggiated synthesizer. It's like here I go again on my own. Fucking gas. Great. Uh. <laughs> the actual version. What is the actual version? But that's my favorite one. My favorite one is the, the the B side or something. Not the album track. Not the extended version. There's a another one, and then there's another one. Uh, the original one with the hobo in it. This uh the bluesy Mick Moody playing a Washburn Falcon. Uh, yeah. I've got, I don't know, White Snake, it never really jumped on me. Uh, 87 Remix might be the one. But uh, I don't know. I never, White Snake never had an album that jumped out that was like maybe I never had, you know, bothered putting it on a tape in the car sort of thing. I always, I always liked that song and shit. Um, must apologize to White Snake's behalf. White Snake were all right. Oh. Everyone's got ADHD. Kit Kats. The original is, I don't know, it's that kind of bluesy, pub rocky thing, which maybe, maybe I would be into now. Um, there's a lot of White Snake albums, and to be honest, I've probably got nearly all of them. I was looking at records today. It might even actually be on my head, uh, head cam, and there was lots of fucking interesting records. I dare not ask how much they were, though. But, uh, Looking through, was it uh, 10 years after albums? It was, oh, 10 years after albums. And I think they had all the ones they had there, six or something. It's like, Jesus, got all, it's, there's so many bands like that that I've got all their records. So yeah, just because I was looking through and getting them for a pound, shit like that, and never actually, or maybe listened to it and I wasn't in the mood or something. Look up Lemmy White Snake. All right, I don't know. I have seen uh, Lemmy's... I even did a cover of Nutbush City Limits. His version of that is fucking hilarious. It's just him in a Tina Turner wig, just going dun, 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 like that. It's fucking great. Uh, I, I, I don't doubt it. I do remember when Lemmy's show was on TV and me and my pal watching it a couple of times and sitting in absolute silence. Like... For... The first two episodes of the two episodes we saw, it was on like two weeks consecutive. That like, fuck it, that was pish. I'm never watching that again. And then, relatively recently, seen stuff and going, fucking hilarious. How did I not get it the first time? Unless he had a really bad series or something. It was just like, wasn't he funny? Um, but now it is. Oh. Cover deal page. Any comments? I had the tape. Uh, got the vinyl. I was the first song's really good. It kind of always reminded me very much of. Um, What's the one that I heard at a very similar time? Uh, call, calling to you, Robert Plant. I don't think I've got that album. Is it Fate of Nations, that album might be called? I think it's right at the edge of when they never bothered actually releasing it on vinyl to the same amount, you know, when the CD took over. So I ended up not actually having that one. Um, I don't think Doug Boyle's on that one. He's on Manic Nirvana. I've got that. Um oh. Mr. White Snake is like, the thing is it's like Hah! there you go. That's why you should be a White Snake fan. It's, it's so I remember suggested that the first band I was in, Garno was up here, was up here. It just it just needs something. It's like, it needs a big David Coverdale. Hah! And just, the Gavin the guitarist was up here. <laughs> yep. And then it was I can't remember it was up here. Damp 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 da bam da bam bam. Ah! Is that up here? So my first, my first, one of my first forties into songwriting was like, what about a big? That was that that band pure blew my mind. I couldn't believe I was actually in a band, and the people, the guy had like an Ozzy Osbourne sticker on his guitar case. I was like, fuck's sake, somebody else is here than Black Sabbath. Um, mental. But I, I loved, I loved the first song on it. Um, I, it's a very, very pretty. Uh, that, so. I suppose it's, they're all probably the same year, maybe the same producer, just a very much of its time sound. I would put Tears of the Dragon by um, 
Bruce Dickinson, the No More Tears album by Ozzy, Coverdale Page album, and Fate of Nations by Robert Plant, as all having something very similarness to it. If you get, you could pretty much give me a bit of any one of those like four albums of a song I'm not really that one of, one, not one of the big hit songs and provided the singing wasn't it and I couldn't have told you who it was that would have guessed one of those ones oh. I was actually telling somebody how you change your name to Mr White Snake live on line at one one time I don't know what your name is anyway it's like not all Scots are bastards eh um Peach Defer from Plant covered her yeah, I don't know. I can't tell you. It's all right. Country stuff. Who does country stuff? Coverdale kicked out of the power. Iomi and Glenn Hughes, any comments? That would have been an amazing album, I think. I do actually have... What's it called? There's like a... They did a couple of albums when he was the singer. Like it was, They were called Fused at one point. Um, I don't know. It would have been amazing to go and see live. Imagine Tony Iommi, Glenn Hughes playing bass and singing, and I can't remember who the drummer was, but that'd be fucking brilliant. I mean, I saw Glenn Hughes a few years ago, and it was just him and Doug Aldrich. Yes, Doug Aldrich, who was White Snake Dio and all that, and uh, I was a young Norwegian drummer or something like that, and they were just playing, and they were fucking brilliant, just a three piece, just pure rocking it out. And I think I think it was maybe one of the first nights of the tour, and they were just Played a wee shitty venue in the garage. I mean, I was right at the front, so it was huge. And I think it was a bit as happy. Yeah, it's happy. Yeah, we're going to do one deep purple one. You can see Doug Douglas going for like that. He's like, freaking G's up to the verse. And you see him kind of going, yeah, right, right. And up here, then the other bit's kind of like an F, F, the chorus. And he's like, yeah, ah, cool. And then, then he comes in, he's like playing. The riff and G, and it's up here, yeah. And then it's like he's singing starts, and then it's like then you can hear Douglas going, Oh, right, oh no, I don't know this one, I've heard this one before. You know, what I mean? and it's like it changes it to be what it's meant to be. Quite funny, but just yeah, brilliant. Ah, uh, uh, slide it in. Kitten's got claws, slow poke music. Yes, there was quite a lot of that. Um, <laughs> sort of dodgy stuff. Uh, my pal was always dead into the. I think it might be the kitten's got clo um might be the slide it in up no what's the album Steve Vise on? That's quite interesting. Oh featuring David Crosby. <laughs> Somebody's not hit the likes. A lot of people haven't hit the likes, bastards. I actually saw um I went to there used to be a, a radio station in Glasgow called 96.3 Rock Radio. Which was a big thing, like actual fucking rock radio station, and then um, I entered a couple of competitions. How did I win it? I think all I did was just send it. All I had to do was just. So I got a ticket. To, you know, I got two tickets to go and see Crosby and Nash at the Hydro at the the Armadillo, and the tickets were fucking expensive. They were like sixty five, seventy quid, which this is ten years ago, probably nearly. And we went out and we got these free tickets on the radio. Got above Tom Russell, uh, um, and uh, we went in and I was like, up here, yeah, I've got, got two tickets to the radio, just like sign on. She's like, up here, we're gonna get those ones. So I went to want the set, and it was just like, here's the seating chart, and it was like, bump it there, like just basically second row, like right in front of the bass player, <laughs> like just just off center, second row, and up here, right. So we sat there, and they were fucking brilliant. Uh, it was just the two of them, and uh, they had a bass player and a uh, a drummer as well. Um, I don't think they're a lead guitarist, but they played um, bus stop, and then, and then later on was happy. But first I was happy that what the fuck's that psychedelic song? And then it was like the two of them were having a bit of banter, and then it was like they had, they had a break at halfway time so you could get like a go to the toilet and then get back on again. It was happy. Well, I agreed that if they was going to make me fucking do bus stop, we were going you were going to do this one, and they played eight miles high. Like, yeah, it was fucking great. In the end, Tetri John, how's it going? Oh. Total bastard's face. Oh.
That's two hundred pounds more than plus minus the, the Tom Russell name drop. Ah, Tom Russell was cool, man. He, he ran, the last time I talked, saw him, he ran away from me because I was completely pissed because another time I didn't win the tickets off him, but um, it was the AC, an ACDC exhibition at the Kelvin Hall. I've still got a sheet of stickers that we stole from it. Uh, Family Jewels, it was called. I think it had gone round Australia and then it had been really successful and then they went, they're kind of Scottish as well, so they, well, they are Scottish, but they're obviously Australia's heroes. So they basically just took the the same thing and went around Scotland as well because they went around well, Scottish as well. So, um, But there was free booze and me and my pal Peg were there and uh, right there. Folk coming in through that door there with three glasses of red wine, like up here, right, I'll go over there, get a couple glasses of red wine. Look, another person comes out that door on the other side with glasses of red wine. So the two of us are like up here, boom, go and get a glass of wine. And it's up here, ah, look, out the other door, there's a guy. And honestly, it's, we must have had five glasses of wine each. And then we were absolutely minced. I remember um, he's actually got a video of Highway to Hell being played. You can look this up if you're pissed. Uh, on the on the Kelvin Grove Highway, the big the church organ thing, and it's got like a big projection on it. And my pal Peg filmed it. And during it, I'm talking to my pal John, and I'm completely steaming. So I'm just da, 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 all the way through it while the the plane Highway to Hell and the organ. It's quite funny. Oh, what happens to the likes? Do you get money? I don't get money, but some people might come. I didn't put in. I don't get any money for this stream because I took turned off the adverts. So I mean, you can at least like that. I don't have adverts. Oh. Fair ground attacks in 50 pounds. I seem to hear Eddie Reader sing Perfect Runner. God, I, hate, I used to hate that song. Oh. Were there many guitars at the market? There were one, two, three, four, five, six, nine guitars at the market. There was actually a guy selling acoustics and I just I'm not I'm not brutal enough. He had a fender one. Uh this thing was brand spanking new. Like you can tell when it's brand new in the gig bag and all that. I was like, okay. That was it it was like a high end one. It was the basic one. I, like, oh, I need 60 quid for it. And I was like you totally you should totally get that for it. Look, but I, mean, I just did what, what, what am I gonna do with it? I'm not really one I wanted ones that were silly. I've always wanted one of these. Well, basically, since I saw one of these in Jen's cupboard, and Jen said it was worth 350 quid, I'm not painting that. And I went, okay, Jen. Because there is one on eBay for 350 quid, but that's someone who thinks it's a cool, a, a Hello Kitty, I think, or a Daisy Rock, because Daisy Rocks are expensive for what they are. I mean, I ended up buying that heart shaped one, which I think uh, Jen's painted and never done anything else with. Um, but I was like, I pure jumped at that because it was 50 quid. And it's like, for fuck's sake, they're always hundreds of pounds. I remember seeing them going, there's a guitar that looks like a butterfly. That's pure ridiculous. That's only going to be 50. 100, 300, what? Fuck off. Not buying that. Uh. Yeah, so you, know, go, go you folk. Folk, I can remember your names. There's a lot of lurkers, but I mean, I know who you are. Uh. I'll go. I'm eventually going to go viral as well. I'm still holding out for that. I think um, I've I've, I've been kind of hinting towards it with the Black Sabbath badge. I don't think I think Andy's probably away now. Um, but I want to record that disco snowblind thing because I think it'll be fucking hilarious. Especially seeing this, we already knew all the chords, and it's like ultimately it's going to take us ten or fifteen minutes to play it, and the song's seven minutes long. So a couple of false starts get through it, and I think it could go viral. And it'd be hilarious. Um, I was, I'm also going to try and pitch it to the band that if we did it kind of quite well, you know, maybe spent an hour in total recording it in some fashion, and then I would play a JPAX guitar, I'd get Craig to play a JPAX guitar, and then it would get up here. Yeah, 20,000 people will see this because that's how many followers thing we had, but I think a lot of people would. Bring me. Mm. Who's a better guitarist? You or Scott Riddell? I don't, I don't. I can't talk about it now. He doesn't talk to me anymore, so I can't leave it. Technically, you can do an awful lot more than me. But I've never, I've never, it's impossible to jam with. And I, I'm not super easy to jam with, but give me a couple of chords, I'll play along. But um,
and so dancing queen that's the one i don't like modiera 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 is a it's a type of cake but also it's a japanese guitar factory i think or a japanese company even though i think they might have moved the, the company might have stayed japanese but the guitars might become korean they make uh, the reason i know them is they do a guitar that looks a bit like the washburn you know the this one this one isn't as obvious you know that the with the through neck thing on it they do a guitar that's kind of a copy of this kind of thing but obviously it doesn't look like this this looks expensive as fuck because to build this is expensive as fuck but um that kind of you know the sort of through neck double cut away but a bit more rounded it's not quite as not as expensive looking they did they did one of them um i don't really know they're not i don't have one no um Tube scheme on eBay for £843. I bought mine years ago for 40 There you go. I mean, oh, it's not there anymore. My soft tech. Soft tech, the reissue, 950 quid for a reissue. Not a real one, a reissue. I paid £50 for it brand spanking new. All right. Um, oh, Mark on the Shadow Lockers. Yeah, but I mean, fair enough. I mean, I don't comment on everything. I, do, I commented on one of the Star Wars collect figure collector guys the other day just because i did and it was the same thing so don't do that it's like you don't necessarily have to be super into guitars or anything or yeah it's like oh a vintage tube screamer yes but how long ago a few days <laughs> hard to jam with that an artistic great ground no i'm just saying it's, it's ah, sometimes you jam sometimes you can't um No, I mean, I've, 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 I've always been hard to jam with. It's difficult. Well, so I, I can play something, but um, uh, the jam sessions are good. You just got to, you got to just get it, and you got to train them up and get used to. It. That's the right thing, especially if you've not been a band before. Um, when I was when I joined Cranking House playing the guitar, I was a fucking terrible for six months. And the guys were so accommodating because I was I was turning up and I was trying and you know I was getting three quarters of every song sounded pretty good you know it's not, it wasn't a case of it just sounded shite the whole time but I don't think I ever really got all the way through a song and just getting used to how to do it and then the problem is what happened after that was I got it and I understood what I was doing and then suddenly I was like all right guys thanks for treading water until I caught up now I've caught up let's go on and they were all like what do you mean go on. We've already learned it. And it's like, oh, but now I can do it. It's like, can we, let's try this. Let's try this. Woohoo. Can we jam this bit? Oh, and it was just like, nope, nope, nope. Oh. Oh. Any thoughts on November rain during recent wind and rain? It's not November. I know that much. Uh, I, I, I know I really, I don't, I don't really like Guns N' Roses. I've never really heard a Guns N' Roses song I liked apart from You Could Be Mine. I think that's, that's, a really good song. Um, there's not really any other ones that I think are really good. I can see that they're obviously classics. Really sweet child of mine. I can understand it. There's a sort of pop rock thing, but not anything in it for me. You know what I mean, but you could be mine's got an amazing uh, vocal line, which is an, it's a, all, all I need. I just need one pure amazing bit, an amazing riff, an amazing drum bit, an amazing melody, an amazing something, and that's one of the songs that's got it. Uh, uh, 70s Japanese made Nalo thing. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd a wee Ibanez conserv Antonia Conservatory, it was called. And it's like, it'll be amazing. Uh, it's just, it's a nylon stringer. Uh, catch you later, Kit Cats. You play your Telecaster. I've never really had, I had a, I've never had a tube screamer. Well, I've got some good pedals that are versions of a tube screamer, but never really found them being the one that I need. I think it depends on what it is you're trying to do. Um, for me, I just want the rap pedal. I kind of like its fuzz. 
and distortion thing that it does. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, I think it's all to do with. Um, but I think if you're playing into a slightly, I, I mean, I don't really. Okay, I was in the the Grankin House band, but I'm not really playing at volume very often. I'm normally just playing in here, and, and it's like I don't know, just the rats the one. Uh, Terminator 2, I've not seen Terminator 2 for years. I remember thinking it was a wee bit, um, what do you call it? A wee bit sappy last time I saw it, which is probably 20, probably when it came out in DVD 30 years ago. Um, the first one, first Terminator. But I mean, it's still, obviously, it's still awesome. I think I was maybe soured by every every one after it, the, the one with the girl in it, the Terminator 3, was just... It's kind of like, I suppose it's a, a wee bit of a vision of what, what they did to Star Wars and they're doing everything else. It's like, it came back, it's got the main character in it, but oh, oh, it doesn't have any vision in it at all. It's just like, we'll just do the same thing and try and tick boxes to make money. Oh, right. Oh. Are there three solos in it? I don't know. I do remember buying the single. Well, buying records, I've been really, really disappointed that it wasn't the Terminator. I just assumed it was the Terminator 2. Theme music, dun, 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 dun. That, oh, that's uh, that's Conan the Barbarian. I would know it when it starts. Ba -da -da. Aye, that's uh, dun, 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 dun. It's the same as Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, um, and it was it was our Guns N' Roses song. I was really disappointed with it. Uh. Rats, I rather rat. I, I think I've got. I know. I do have a boss, but it's like, not to be super snobby about it. But I could hear the difference about the the digital buffer thing that's in it. I think that's what it is. It's one of those things that I remember having a a Digitech hot head pedal, and even when it wasn't on, it just it changes the sound of my amp because I'm all. Well, I am all. I don't have the wireless thing plugged in. I'm all analogy. Not saying it's not as good. I just notice there's a differences in the pedal, so I don't really use it. Um. But I do have, I've got an OS2. Is that the one that's got like, it's, it's got the same three knobs as the OD, but it's got like a, a the knob at the ends, like one side's OD1 and one side's SD1. Is it something like that? Um, EHX Memory Man, yes, I've got one of them. I've got, a, no, I've got a memory toy, which I think is the Memory Man, but with less. <laughs> But I don't really use it very much. Um, uh, what the Scottish Cops did at a Ranger Celtic match for the new hate crimes, but I don't even know. They've not thought about it. Uh, boss Super Overdrive. It could be a Super Overdrive. I've got yellow. Uh, um, I can't remember what it says on it. I got it. It was in a, I bought a base, and the guy's like, pure, oh, there's a pedal in the gig bag. It doesn't work. You can have that. All right, cool. And then game more, plugged it in, didn't work. Gave it a squish with a contact leader, plugged it in, did work. Hey. <laughs> so, and I can remember looking them up. I think it was like a was that an 80 quid pedal, something like that. So it kind of paid for half the base that I'd bought. Um that was a fight after our Squire Proton series, which are um pretty good. Uh the reason for not keeping it was I've already got a five string bass, which I never play, which is a an Ibanez kind of like a jazz bass. It's a funny one. Um a, a, a nondescript somewhere between a P bass and a jazz bass. Doesn't look pointy or modern, but until I painted it with yellow and black stripes. Um but it's got the same width of neck here as like a P bass, just the strings are closer together, whereas the, the square one had like if you imagine it was like another twenty-five percent bigger so the strings were the same distance apart as they are on a normal p bass apart from there was five of them so the neck was pure ah! it was like pure holding it was like pure, ah! oh jeez it was, it was difficult ah. yeah i detected in the chat yeah totally i do find that um disturbing when I, mean, I don't have that apple thing that listens to you <sighs> Yeah, so if you all like it, that's how you mess with the algorithm in a good way. 
the way to do it. Um, yeah, I can't believe I'm still awake. I got up at five o'clock this morning, and it's now what, nine o'clock at night. Now nearly ten o'clock. So there, I can't work out how many hours that I've been awake. But that's why Bucky has caffeine in it. Have you tried Schecter guitars? Yes. Uh, Schecter were one of the first, my first bass, my first real bass. Technically, my first bass, West Tone Spectrum DX, hated it, only had it a couple of months. But an Aria Pro, which I've, I got back 20 years later, ZZB, which I traded in against an Epiphone EBO because I thought, oh, that's cool as fuck. Played that for a couple of years and then had a shot of a P bass and went, oh, and then bought a Schecter 1986 Kokobo body, bodied, uh, the most expensive guitar I've ever bought by like a hundred quid um, Schecter. And then a few years later, I was looking up, uh, I was in Victor Morris and I had another one for 120 quid. It needed refretted though, but 120 quid for a Chandler custom. That's the one that I think was on um top of the pops because these things were handmade one at a time there's not likely to be one with the same neck the same body and the original emg pickups which i think the emg pickup is probably worth 500 quid it's like emg writing on it's the size of the pickup um don't call me malky i don't you can call me bastard if you want but i've never liked malky that's why i made it malco it was always just malk before yeah, but I mean, Schecter guitars are good. I don't, the, the newer ones are just your Samic C Hondos and stuff like that. They're just that. Um, the Diamond series. I'm talking about the original one. Uh, when and Victor Morris. What did I do in Victor Morris? Uh, you might have been in that day. Oh, fuck's sake. Um well, I'll tell you that I, that day I was annoyed because I just bought the Record Collector 2004 book. And then I saw that bass. So I, I think it was about 20 quid. Is it 2003 or 2004 that I bought that book? And then that was in Waterstones or something. Then I basically walked in below the bridge, went in, and there's a fucking other Schecter P bass for 120 quid. Looking at it, ebony fingerboard, wooden fret markers. Got a fucking EMG pickup that I've never seen before, but it's got EMG and massive letters on it, and it's like it's pure beat up to a fuck. It sounded amazing on everything but the A string. Um, my mate Malky likes Malky, but I sometimes use Malky, he doesn't mind. <laughs> oh, so good. I took me too, babe. Uh, it was the guitar store. Uh, Sorry, they were just both the same people. I did buy my Epiphone SG on on my 19th birthday in Victor Morris. Rather than the I don't know, I don't know the guitar store was open then. And then it became later on. I was thinking of buying a Schecter sometime too. Now I take it it's a modern one. Um I stopped looking at them because the prices of them is just was just insane. It's like they were I, I kind of liked it because I was basically buying the way I saw it, I was buying what was the equivalent of a Fender that was significantly better than a Fender because when I bought my P bass, they had a 1975 jazz bass, which was that color, apart from it had a black scratch plate and it had the, the maple neck with the black things on it, and it was 550 quid. And it was like, pure, I was just totally going to buy it. And it was Gavin, the guitarist in the band's like, ah, try that Schecter. I was like, Schecter? It sounds like Shiter. I like, no, I think it might be really good. What's happened? It's got like a jobby brown scratch put lifted out, and it was like aluminium, like anodized gold. Like, all right, and then I shot of it, it was fucking miles better than the fender. Um, so that's why I bought it. I remember reading Gary Moore just Schecter's the same. I didn't know Gary Moore played Schecter's. There you go. But yeah, Chandler, you can tell the the Chandler ones because the serial number starts CS for Chandler Schecter. Because Schecter were not allowed to make guitars they actually had an official fender license to sell upgrade parts or replacement parts for previous guitars so you could buy like a broadcaster neck that was identical spec to a broadcaster or from 56 or, you know whatever it was um but they also did really exotic woods and they made every part so basically they made 
upgrades of every single bit you needed to build a Fender, but they weren't officially licensed, so they weren't actually allowed to build guitars. So there was a shop in Dallas and there was Chandler's, or people used to just build them themselves. They would just buy all the parts, but they made all the bits. Oh. The Boss Dimension pedal, I'm not sure if I know what that is. Have a Schecter, it's for sale. Yes, yeah, it's a, a Schecter Diamond series, Mr. White Snake. Playing a Schecter was a young band code for the yeah, exactly. I remember my pal used to have a very similar thing. He, um, he had a CD player that was by Schneider, and it was like it was a bit of a Schneider. <laughs> um, yeah, finger, finger point. No, you played a Schecter, yeah. No, I, I genuinely thought it was a wee bit like Corker, it's a really bad name. It's just it sounds like a Schecter, and it's like, I'm pretty sure I've used the word before. It's a Schecter, you know what I mean? Um, but then they came back. Because for a couple of years, I had, uh, I was the only Schecter I'd ever seen, and I looked them up, and it was up here. Hold on, and I remember watching the Live Aid DVD my pal bought, and every fucking band's got a Schecter. Every, their Telecasters, all the, these sort of 80s looking Telecasters are everywhere. Um, hey, Ian, how's it going? How's, how are you doing? Uh, <sighs> Hey, I'm Wales. Yeah, I'm good. I've been up since five this morning because I went to Block Air and Market. Um, so basically, the only thing that's keeping me awake is uh, the Bucky. Um, so I might crash quite soon or quite abruptly, I think it's probably more the word. So I was amped in Wales. And have you bought a, did, have you bought a Marlin Sidewinder that says... Blah blah blah, Wales on the back, even though it's nothing to do with Wales, just so that you've got something that says because I mean let's be honest, I would buy a guitar that if it was Marlon Scotland, I would have one. I told the band one day I'd play a proper Schecter to the words. Ah, uh, the Northeast Guitar Show. You got three cheapo pedals, smashing. Where whereabouts was that? And when was that? That can't be the one I mean. Uh, J Pax went down to Stratford upon Avon, but we were uh, the weekend after the Birmingham guitar show, which was a stupid fucking thing. We should have gone at the Birmingham guitar show. I take it that's a the Sunderland, Sunderland today, right? I didn't even know there were other guitar shows. Maybe I should be. We should be looking at that. Uh, you played a Schecter bass with the BGs and Phil Collins at Live Aid. Cool. <laughs> Um, they laugh. Yeah, <laughs> the bucks going on. Everybody, that's the, everybody else, steely down. Oh, yeah. Catch you later, you'll come. I've got a weird issue with a strap when I'm playing the bottom E, I'm getting weird harmonics like I've got an octave mixed in. The bottom E is in the fat one. Um, make sure, like, see the two wee grub screws that the saddle's sitting on. One of them is, it's not sitting on one of them and the other one's kind of rattling a little bit. And the other one would be a uh, see the in the nut slot like if you imagine this, the strings going through it the nut slot see if i don't if, if you imagine that's the slot kind of cut away the back of the smooth it so you get like because i think it's what's happening as the string might be coming over and if you imagine how the fuck do i describe this this is a hard bastard this piece of metal here might do it just because it's u-shaped so what am i thinking here hey nut slot so that's the nut and the string's going over it, you might find it's binding on this side, so you, or this way, aye. So you kind of want to, if you might imagine the traveler that's kind of slope it, let the strings go this way, kind of slope it back the way, so the string leaves the, the inside of the nut at the front. I think um, there could be other things. Uh, basically, before, uh, are, the, are the strings you've got new or decent? Because these things, I've had situations, of, I've, I've helped people out who've tried absolutely everything you could possibly have and then i've just said just put another set of strings on it they put another set of strings on it and it was that was the whole problem sometimes a string is broken inside 
or it's got a kink in it, or there's some flaw that you can't see. Um, oh. I touched the 58 burst. <laughs> well, I've, I've, I've definitely, I've, I've played an eight grand 58 burst reissue that was 10 years old. But it was shite. Uh, got a piss in his back plug. That's the way it goes. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's one of those things. I mean, obviously, it's a fucking lovely guitar. But on the other side, it costs hundreds of thousands of pounds. It's like, so is it hundreds of times better than this? It's not, no, is it? Fuck. I mean, give this to Peter Green and he'll play Albatross better than I can on his guitar that cost a million bucks. Um, I'm having another fag. Uh, the wee stag I bought put a nice lumen pickup, so we strung it. I'll have to check it over. Got a steel wheel in the neck, it's proper sticky. Yeah, I mean, it could just be a high fret or something like that. I would always, um, kind of like what I did with this, I would always you get a guitar like that before you put, unless there's bits actually missing from it, you know, okay, the, the volume control doesn't work, put a new one in it. But these things don't really make any difference to the way the guitar plays. I would spend all the effort on trying to make it play without farting and buzzing um i've not done this guitar yet it's playable i've got the action set a little bit high because i don't know i'm, I'm starting to think i don't think you really need to have the super low action it's just because i can do it you know things like the paul gilbert i've got them set up so it's pure blah, 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 and it's like you can actually play in some ways it's easier having a bit more play in it you know what i mean oh But yeah, it's totally, it's, it's worth, get yourself a fret rocker, one of these. Don't buy the one that Andy Neon Tech Region bought though, because it doesn't, well, it's still got the metal plate, you, know, you, just, you can just run it through and you can just find it if there is a, a high fret. I'm not finding the one, I'm getting, oh, I'll leave it there. None of these are the comfort though. There's a bit there, a bit there. Right there, yeah, this kind of needs stoned up at the top of the fretboard. But to be honest, on a wee guitar like this, if it plays the open chords and the B, To be honest, who's buying a guitar like this? Unless they're buying it ironically, like I am. It's you know, basically twelve-year-old girls are getting this for Christmas, and it's good enough to learn totally to play your open chords and all that shit. Um, and really, is it worthwhile? Say you're selling this, you know, one hundred and fifty quid, say for the pack. Is it worth spending the extra time on paying somebody to sort the higher frets? How many people are going to play a guitar like this and be above the 12th fret, for example? Nobody is. Oh. Are time of value of paintwork? I don't know what one's 100 times more valuable, um, but yeah. That's what you think. Like the colour of this thing. Chuck the release bar out. Yeah, totally. No, I'll just, I'll just fucking stone the bastard. Um, get it back in. But I mean, it's like, it's not, it's like, what, what am I aiming for with this? And it's really to make something that's quite easy to play. You can play lead on it, but it's really good for playing, you know, rhythm and learning on, which is kind of what this guitar, a guitar like this should be for. It's not, you know, it's like, obviously you've got a PGM. You've got to set that up for doing 300 mile an hour. You know what I mean? And less is, this is not a guitar for that. Um, So we would shave it in the tech. <laughs> change bass. When did you change bass strings? I'm changing bass strings soon. Basically, I change bass strings when suddenly you just go, 
Oh God! Oh my! Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I can't play this. This is just. Oh no! Have you shot your base? No, 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 no. You can't play it. No. <laughs> there is a point when you get to when suddenly you've just got like, it's like, see, it's like wet rope. See when you've got like wet old fashioned rope that's wet. It's holding a boat on. It's just like yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. Oh. Um. It's unfortunate, yeah. Oh, oh, that's great. But the thing is, there's, there's, a, there's a certain perverse pleasure in playing cheat. I mean, that's fucking actually, that's what I'm meant to do. It just didn't sound as good, obviously. But, uh, I've got a. Uh, using my wee, um, where's the on switch? There. My wee rolling cube. But uh, the rolling cube, I'll, I'll be honest, it doesn't sound as good as. The the eight hundred pound orange jab, but if I turn that round so you can, but a tenor guitar, yeah. What was that tune? Is that just uh, is it basically just missing E and A strings? I've seen it. It's a Telecaster, isn't it? It looks kind of mental. Um. You bought a David Hasselhoff record for the poster, but it's missing. It's the thing is, if you've got a if you've got a Hoff record, you're going to have that poster on your wall. You have to. I was trying to think. Would you give you? Would you give it to your friend and say you like you like playing this guitar? It depends who it is. But I mean, the thing is, I know that I I, I understand the snobbery thing. I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but there was a, I, I understand that you get there's a lot of preconceptions before you pick up a guitar. It's mine, mine kind of goes backwards to what other people's would. Someone would up here, do you want a shot of this 58 Gibson Les Paul? People would go, Oh, this is going to be pure amazing. I'll be pure. I'll be going up here. This is better be fucking good. Do you know what I mean? This better be worth. This better be as as much better than all these guitars as to be worth a thousand times as much. It must be much better. You know, kind of a bit skeptical. But everyone's got that. Um, and a guitar like this is like, for me, there's a perverse pleasure in playing things on something as silly as this. Uh, so this is currently a... Well, I'm using the wireless system. Let's just assume I bought the wireless system new. Um, it's 13 quid. It was 60 quid's worth of shit I'm playing through just now, including strings. And I didn't... Okay, I did. I didn't really do anything to this apart. I did shim the neck, but you can watch a video on how to shim a neck. Uh, just got a Marshall JCM 900 combo my lady was getting just too heavy any thoughts on the JCM 900 I can't imagine you it being lighter than fucking uh, anything is it not I mean a JCM 900 if someone said what uh, that, that would be the amp I would have especially the combo ones just a 1x12 because then obviously you could just run it into like a 4x12 cabinet Kind of similar to that, but from 50 watt. Um, yeah, no, it'd be amazing. I've actually got a Marshall in the hall, my pal who does not have room for all the amps he's got, so I've always got one of them. I had a Supro for the last couple of months. Now I've got a Marshall JTM, like a red leatherette thing. Um, no, but I, I just basically it's my soft tech, I think, is what the uh, J, that your JCM is like. If I change the strings, my bass it would double the value. String, bass strings are ridiculously expensive. That was when I totally, when uh, I got that big box of stuff off Jen, or uh, J Darren, Jen's at Appier, I just bought a big massive pile of stuff, I said, you want? And it was like, I saw these immediately, it's at Appier. That's a pure, that's like a, that's like a month's worth of food. Easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, in two packets of bass strings. So I've got three Roto bass strings, 66s, 45, 65, 80, 105, 45, 65, 85, 105. Is that the only difference? Does, does that really make a difference to people? It is, it has, uh, 25 quid. 25 quid. There's actually, if anyone's looking for bass strings, there's uh, a couple of sets for 15 quid in the charity shop in Govan. Oh. 
You can tune it like a banjo. Oh dear. <laughs> the guitars got smaller there. This is this is the the next big thing. Candy rocks. It's got a purple neck on it. Uh, but this is a F A C G C E. I don't even know what that is. E A G G B E. Ah, I don't. I just. I don't, I don't do. Don't do tunes. You still not strong the bass. I'm still not strong any of the basses. Basses currently gagging for strings are the wee uh, the tartan Black Sabbath bass. That's getting strings. Uh, but Ibanez Roadster, my Sabbath bass, my, my C sharp one. It's, it's not on strings or fringes. I kind of, I kind of want to paint it again. It doesn't look that good. Um, uh, what was the other set going on? I'm not sure. I do have quite a few basses that kind of need, but I'm really just only going to be string basses I'm going to play in the Sabbath band. I've already done the the Schecter P bass. I've already done see, I've got, I've got a wee Hondo bass, a wee Tiger Hondo bass. It's fucking amazing, but the strings on it are absolutely fucked. And that was two years ago, the last time I looked at the thing. I, I, I need to, Jim, I will eventually need to, it's like, a wee bit like one of those things when you try and play something that you've not tried to do for ages. What was I thinking? Someone was talking to me about Hendrix earlier on, and it was like, I, the last time I listened to Hendrix, I'd only played the guitar for a year or two. So I bet you now if I listen to Hendrix again, like purpose, obviously I've heard Hendrix songs, but I've not actually intentionally stuck on records. I'm sure there's shit that goes on that I will now understand what it is he's doing. Um, oh, that trick! I can already do that. Lots of that will go on the same way. I've I've just never got into the tuning thing. When I started playing the guitar, I was using tunings, but it was like you tune it to open F and play Street Fighting Man, and then play Street Fighting Man again, and then tune it back to something else so you could play another song. Um, there will be. Jim, I don't doubt that there will be a revelation day. I'm still expecting it with pedals. That's why I did that big video on the the Zoom effects unit. It's like someday I am going to go, oh, wow. All these effects, amazing. I've kind of gone a little bit that way with a jazz chorus sound on this, which is the first chorus I've ever found acceptable. <laughs> Volvo, that's like Swedish seems reasonable. You can't say up the Celtic. I don't even know whether that's pro or anti Celtic, but none of that. <laughs> up your Celtic or good Celtic or great or Celtic or shite. I don't know. Not, not, not interested. It was actually when I was doing my pedal board earlier on, I was figuring, apart from it's got, I've got bad connectors between the pedal. I don't know if you can see. There's enough gap in there to get another wee midi pedal, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering about maybe putting the chorus in because I'm enjoying this chorus. Yeah, I opened. I mean, no, open tunes. It's like it's, it's the same thing as happens with the effects pedals. I think it depends on. Basically, if you're playing a guitar, you're a wee bit different anyway, I think. And um, it's just, you've all, you all, everyone hears slightly different things. The people who are mad into music, you know, the people that really matters to, like myself, it's like some things it's like, it matters far more than it should. Um, there's things in it um, that, I don't know, it's just not always there. Oh, a wee bit reverb in between, tiny bit of room. I've 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 I've, I've, I've converted onto reverb now. I, I now use it, but I'm now I, I've talked myself out of it in the sense of I'm thinking that reverb isn't really an effect because what you're doing is making it sound like you're playing in a bigger room. So ultimately, whatever reverb setting I could get, I could get that by going into like a church hall or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's 
Again, it makes your amp sound bigger. Um, I use it a lot. I mean, it's like it's an amazing thing once you get used to it. I mean, just on, on this wee, uh, this wee Roland, um, just enough to give it air. And you can get a guitar that sounds, you know, it's like... A Tone City Golden Plexi 1 from the show. You know, like, the, the, the cat is sleeping on my amp. <laughs> and the Tone, the... I didn't have a... I've not had the... Oh, the Golden Plexi? I'm not sure. That's like an, an amp thing. It gets in there. It's unplugged into the... Well, no, it's it's wireless. Look. That was that lead was just sitting there from when I had it plugged in, but so it's wireless into the microcube. And yes, the microcube. Don't agree with your standard football, regardless of other sides. I don't like football. But yeah, the microcubes are amazing amps. Um, it just comes down to that thing of... I've got we battery powered amps before and even small amps and you go oh it sounds pretty good in the confines of thinking it's just a wee tiny amp for practice whereas that actually sounds good straight up doesn't matter the fact that it's battery powered doesn't matter for the fact that it sounds good and the fact that it's not really that big doesn't really matter it's just like it doesn't have much on it but everything it does is fantastic and even the I was doing a video I've not used it since it's got an acoustic simulator on it The only thing I would change in this is if I had some way of putting a loop pedal in like an effects loop um, would be amazing. Oh. Just to make it sound live, yes. Hi. Is it thing when you're recording? I found it really found you know, like the after effects when you put like reverb and echo and shit like that on like a post recording when you're mixing shit. Totally, yeah. Of course you do that. Whereas why wouldn't you just do it live to start with? Uh, uh. <laughs> Hey, Finland, Volvo, 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 not Swedish. Um, how do you manage different levels from your guitars using the same radio input into everything? Uh, I don't know. I, I basically just use, I mean, radio wireless is just the same as a cable, yeah? I mean, to be fair, it's going into a different, I just use the volume control. That's that. I mean, the only, I pretty much so rarely touch any of the knobs on the, any of the stuff from the main amp but I was messed about there, there's quite a big difference see when you change patches like when I went onto the acoustic there I had to turn the volume up now that I've gone back to electric it's, I've, had to, I've had to turn the volume down a bit and the same thing happens if I go onto one of the distortion ones it's, it's much louder so you have to turn the volume down Good. There will be a way of finding a really easy to find distortion. I've not got a good um yet. I've not worked out. There's four. I'll get black panel 
Brit combo, classic stack and rectifier to mess about with, with a gain and a volume. So there will be a good, basically the sound I want is kind of like the rat pedal through that is what I'm after. If I can get a sound that's anything like that. Um, but the clean is stunning. It sounds fucking huge. It doesn't sound smaller than the orange playing through the 3 by 12 cabinet. It's got some sort of swishy thing that makes it sound bigger than it is. Tone and frequency. Maybe I'm asking about patch management. I don't know about patch. I mean, yes, I mean, I suppose if you're using like something like the that zoom effects unit, it'll have separate volumes, but this is a does have a multi effects unit in it. But it fucks up. <laughs> So look at that, I can just pick that up because <laughs> it's completely, look, but it's, it's still even on. So you've got like two, oops, that's not going to be inching anymore since I just battered off the stereo. But if you look up here, you've got two different effects units. Um, so you've got a amp type with acoustic simulator, jazz chorus, and then the distortion ones. A vo a gain and a volume, a tone, and then two effects banks one of which has chorus, flanger, phaser, and tremolo on it, and the other one has delay and reverb. And it's just like, perfecto. The only thing about this amp, which is a bit shit, is the tuner. So there's this button here, and uh, if you press it gently, plays a, a reference note. And if you hit it hard, it plays a reference note hard. It plays an A for you, that's it. So my pal actually just bought one of these, but he bought a Cube GX. And basically, I know you could just get, you know, you can get a wee clip on tuner, easy enough, um, for a couple of quid. But that's really the only weakness in that is I would rather have, the only thing I would really change, and that would just happen, because I think that's 20 years old. The GX one has, I think it might have another amp model in there. It's very similar. The knobs are in a slightly different place, but it's basically all the same stuff. But instead of having that stupid reference note, it's got like a, you know, Two red lights and a green light thing, chromatic tuner in it. Um, but no, I'm just doing level management using this volume control. Um, I was 665, so it was a balance well, so God said to me, let's jump over. The wireless things, apart, um, my pal Bob, Burger Bob has a a more expensive version of these and they actually come with a, in a wee case and when you're finished using them you just put them in the case and that's the charger that would be a handy thing these are the pure cheap crappy ones you get these are only fucking i think it's 13 quid you can get them from it's actually now now running out of battery um but these are i don't know how, how old these are but even just and saying that i'm doing these streams are three or four hours long it's enough to get you through a gig anyway but um if you, as long as you remember to charge them up. I mean, I'm not noticing any difference. There's no delay or sound difference or anything like that at all, even on the cheap, shitty ones. Never mind the ones that cost, you know, 50 quid for the same company, so they must be better. Um, it's, it is quite liberating. It's almost the sort of thing, I mean, to be honest, I mean, just get yourself two sets of them. It's kind of worth it. Uh, uh, the rat is funny. <laughs> I don't know what ostrich tuning is now. Uh, I, 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 the rat's my favourite pedal. I, say, I don't know. I just hap happened upon it because I was in a band. I played the bass. I'd only played the bass for about a month and the, the guitarist, my, my pal Michael, went to America and came back with a Jackson Kelly, two Seymour Duncan pickups, one of which was burst and he threw out. The other one I've managed to nab since then and a rat pedal. And because the bad we were in, I don't even think we were a month in, we were playing a Blur song too. And I was using the rat pedal because it's in the video. And uh, I eventually bought it off him. I don't even know when or how much or anything like that, but it's basically the one pedal. I don't need it anymore. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yours might. I, they probably do last eight hours, but the, thing, the problem is I don't know how long 
to charge them from. And also these might be, these are maybe years years old. I didn't pay for them. Uh, I'm getting a, that Lakato company has contacted me, the ones who give me the wee loop pedal. Um, as I'm looking at wireless systems, because it's, it's, I kind of like the idea. It's, it's, I mean, to be honest, it's like I can't, I, I, I just can't really in, talk about investing money in it when I'm starting. 99% of the time I play the guitar, I can just touch the amp. So I might as well just use a lead. You know what I mean? Um, but definitely, I'm definitely taking them out of the studio next week and seeing what they're like. Just the ability just, just to be free from it. They'll definitely last three hours. I think I just might, I might get myself a set that's got, or even just, it's, it's not so much having like the, the proper charger thing. It's just having, just having like the plug thing set out. So you remember to do it. They're there. Oh. Are you planning at playing extreme? I don't know how to play any extreme, unfortunately. I mean, I was never a fan. I never heard anything I liked by them, but that Rick Beato doing interviews with uh, Nuno, and I do like Nuno. And I do like that. I mean, he's an amazing guitarist. I was at Scott, who I no longer who no longer talks to me as I was up here. Yeah, it's like used to like when the new Extreme album came out, he would literally just record a tape for the car. It was just the solos. So I put it up bizarre thing to do and it's like but actually I can see why you why, why you would do that DFG oh uh, song two is it I Also, in fact, I can put this up. Unfortunately, the the chap died who used to run Berkeley Studios, but the first time we were ever in the studio. In fact, Michael must have, I think we, before we went into the studio, Michael went to America. I think it was like we had a couple of jams, but never with the drummer. I'm a, I, I think I played guitar. Whatever happened, and then but I remember the first time we were ever in the studio, we played, we had two songs, an original song and song two, and the, had the rap pedal that first time. I'm pretty sure, and I remember stomping on first time ever in the studio. We can only play two songs, so we just spent the whole time smoking fags and woohoo, we're in the studio. And then the, these big uh, soundboard things on the wall, you know, like sort of foam and a wooden frame. And I obviously stomped on it and jumped off it, and the whole fucking thing came off the wall on top of me. And it was just like clouds of dust everywhere. And it was like, oh. And then about 10 minutes later, Michael was trying to move the the monitor over closer. There was that bit, uh, 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 and he pulled the socket right out the wall. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but it's, it's all right. The guy, um, that was that was years ago. Oh, yes, yeah, song two rap pedal. Ah, oh, that rap pedal's great. May try the wireless. Seems over the top. It does, but it's only fifteen quid, Mister White Snake. And it's like the possibilities of it being amazing. It's like I'm thinking. See, even when I'm outside, you're know, talking about using the. Like the wee gigging, the wee busking amp type things, you've got to have that on you. Whereas I like my wee, I've got a wee orange amp that clips into my belt, which is great for plugging into this, and you can go, oh, you can walk about. Whereas you can't really do it with the Black Star Flies or the Cube. You can't really have it on your person. But if you've got the radio thing, you just carry it and put it. Fucking amazing. Um, where was Jolo? Got sat it for thirty five. You can get it for thirty. Yeah, it's probably it's possibly exactly the same thing. It's Lakato is the company that contacted me. Um, I think that's what these are. I'm sure sure these are Lakato. I just even say on it. Um, okay, so they're, they're, they're maybe not. Um, but it's, it's probably. I would say it's maybe worthwhile spending the extra fiver and getting the one that bends because this one is actually working all right in this strat. It's okay when you go in the front, but when you go in the bottom, it, can, it doesn't really matter. Um, you just get used to it. Uh, you played it thrice the intro. What what, what, what song is it? Um, that that uh... I play that all the time. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> Many gigs planned. Yes, we're gonna. We're we're definitely gonna. Do a bit more. We've now got uh, 
I don't know. We've got our singer back, the original singer. Um, and we're now able to do. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried I'm going to cry when we play Simpson Universe next week. Oh. Oh, I, I, mean, I think we're, we're probably going to down tune it to C sharp. But I mean, Simpson Universe is the best song ever in the world. And it's like just the last couple of weeks we've been playing um, a few ones that I used to play. Like when was it? Was in that band? The gig was in August 2019. I think I was in the band for about maybe six or seven rehearsals before a two-hour gig, and then the singer disappeared after the first gig, and then we had the one the second week, but the, the thing was, I still, I'm not sure I would have been able to make the second, we had, were playing in Glasgow on one Saturday, and then the following Saturday we were playing in Edinburgh, and I was so ill on like the Friday, you know, I was like pure, I'd been in bed for like 36 hours, just like pure dying, it's like fucking just, just joined the first band I've been in in 10 years. I'm going to go anyway. And it was like, ah, oh, and then it was like, oh, it's, and it's fucked off. Like, oh, no, pure panic. And then it was like, I was like, well, oh, honestly, I would have been fucked. I would have done it anyway, just out of sheer grit and determination, but it would have been terrible. Oh. How much tax and tobacco? So much tax and tobacco. It's pretty ridiculous. The, the tobacco I was buying in America was like, a pound, it was like a dollar. You're like, what? But then other things were really expensive. Oh, talking about America, one of the things I was talking about, and then um, we get crisps here that have only just come out recently called Fuego, and they're really expensive, but they're really, really fucking strong. And when I was in America, I saw these ones that were the same type of crisp, but they were fucking neon blue, and they were like five bucks a packet. I, mean, I couldn't. I would have bought some shit in America, but it was so expensive. All the food was or in Pennsylvania was so expensive compared to what it used to. But at the car boot sale today, Takis, and it's like, and it's like, yes, look, look, fucking blue. I just assumed that they were not. Um, I think about this, they seem very expensive for a wee packet, but it's a heavy packet and they're so fucking strong. Jesus. I'm not sure they're the best tasting ones, but to be honest, the packets of that size of the not neon blue ones are £2.75 here, and that was two for a pound. So. They're actually quite good value because I will still be eating. I've got two packets of that. I'll still be eating that one packet midweek because you can only eat so many. It's like, see, when you eat something with, uh, have you ever had wasabi peas? They're amazing. And you can eat, I don't know, 10, 15 wasabi peas. And then suddenly it's like, it's like horseradish. Your nose gets to the point of, oh, hold on. There's no pleasure in this anymore. This is too hot. You have to wait half an hour. And then instead of having 20 peas you ate the first time, it's only six. And then it comes back. So the basically the packet just lasts you forever. It's amazing. <sighs> That's right, Mr. White Steak. I'm going to bed soon anyway. I've been up since five in the morning. I'm fucked. Oh, it's not the wire stronger things we in the way. I I just I just I, I just never liked it. I thought I just felt it was a bit um a bit unnecessary for me, but and the fact that it, it, there is no, I mean, I'm, I'm having no, I mean, I, I'm I'm the super critical one who would go, yeah. I'm not getting my 100% analogue, you know, I'm, there's no difference, um, as far as I'm concerned. Especially not for how good my ears are, and I'm playing through the amp, I always play through, well, I'm playing through that one. <laughs> No, America, Mr. White's take. I'm sorry about America. Some of the food was appalling. Um, some of it was really good, though. When we got a, a, it was like a, what do you call it? A black chicken or something? Dark meat chicken? Like a, just a fucking cooked roast chicken and it was only like five bucks. It was, fuck, it was the best food I had in America the whole time I was there. Just like, yes! Brilliant. Just other stuff. I mean, some of them, I said, they don't, I mean, they can be, 
sitting here going, oh, the EU are pure crushing our freedom and all that. But really, I mean, do you want to be able to legally buy turquoise crisps? I bought them as a joke, but I don't think they should be allowed. Um, it's the same as the team you walk down the drink aisle and it's like, you, know, you see like Fanta. It's just pure. It's so orange. It's like, Jesus. That's obviously just staining your whole insides orange as well. Um, oh. Oh, I, mean, I, I, don't, I, mean, I, I, I think a lot of these things, if you're, if you're looking for something, I try and pride myself in, even if it's not what I expect to have the ability to do it. So give me a guitar that I'm fully expecting it to be pure amazing. And if it's shite, I want to be able to say it's shite or notice that it's shite or give me a guitar that I think is going to be shite and pick it up. And it's fucking amazing. I really pride myself in help, hopefully having that ability, maintaining it, you know, not this already deciding before you play it sort of thing. Um, <sighs> Roadkill is fresh, but whatever. It's up to you, I'll be playing it. I don't have distortion. Sounds to be rolling cool. I'll have to try good American Tex Mex. I don't know. I mean, I did have when I was in America at the time. I've not seen you since I went to New York in November. Um, I had my first ever Mexican meal at a Mexican restaurant. Was not impressed. Oh no, oh no. Um, uh, must have vintage. DC Les Paul single P90 today. Mm. Yes. I, it's tempting. I don't actually have... Well, I don't know. It's pretty, I don't actually have one sitting. The thing is that these things can happen. Like Things like my Flying V. You can kind of get... With the flying, my Flying V, okay, it's a bolt on neck. And it's Japanese. But as far as I'm concerned, that's every bit of Gibson Flying V. Um, from the 70s. I've played, recently I played a 75, 76, I can't remember what year it was, Les Paul, and it's like, it's, it's if, if, if anything, you know, it's a total same ballpark. Um, they do do, um, they, they, there are double cut Les Pauls and SG specials and shit, just the vast majority are Les Pauls. I don't really, uh, Mexican food was poor, yeah, it was awful. Um, I got uh, four brown things in a brown thing. And it was like, see, Mexican food. I do remember going to a place called Chimichangas in the West End 30 years ago and having like sour cream and shit and it had been quite good. But apart from that, I've never had a Mexican meal I didn't make myself. So I basically make it look like it does on the old El Paso packet. And by fuck was that healthier than what I got in that Mexican restaurant. But it was just sloppy, just like 
it was it was bizarre. I mean, it was it was relatively pleasant. It was all right, but it wasn't it wasn't restaurant grade food. I didn't think it was edible. Kept me alive. Uh, get a Mexican girlfriend. That's how you do it. Yeah, totally. Uh, there are no good Mexican restaurants in the East Coast. I don't know. I mean. I don't, I don't, would you call it Pennsylvania on the East Coast? It probably is. Um, it's a bizarre thing. The whole eating out thing is just so much more a thing in America than it is here. Um, I thought it was like the difference. Like, see, when you eat out, you as an Americans, is it costs this much, but to buy the food in the supermarket costs this much, whereas here, to eat out costs this much. But to buy the food and make it yourself is this much. There's a, there's a massive difference between, you know, like a tenfold, whereas like, am, am I going to go and buy the ingredients and make a and make a family meal or take out to a restaurant? It's like 10 times the price easily to go to a restaurant, whereas in America, it's not that, it's not as big a gap um, between it. Um, fuck. <laughs> I mean, just fart. <laughs> Four brown things and brown things, yes. I mean, I don't even know what it was I got. Was it Fajitas or something? I don't know. I mean, I just always made them look like... So I'm, you know, cooking fresh mince or fresh chicken, looking at the old El Paso packet, putting the fucking powdery shit in, getting lettuce and tomatoes and sweet corn and all that crap, making it fresh. It wasn't like that. Um, Four brown things and a brown thing. Sure, it wasn't a German restaurant. No, I don't know German. Uh, apart from German kebabs, or apparently... German. Uh, I ate at a guitar show. They were charging seven pound for a scabby burger. I think the the correct term is Ming burger, or it was when I was a when I was going to Teen the Park. Ming burger. Yes, it's um, it's difficult. It's, I, I I struggle so much. I mean, I, I even I was pure starving this morning when we were at um, Blackheer Market. Or not Blackheer. We went to Paul Paul Madi. Paul Madi. I don't know how you pronounce it. And it was like, Jen's like, I'm going to have a rolled sausage. And I was like, I'm just not going to bother. I've got my packets of blue crisps. I'm going to go to my bed anyway when I go home. Um, and I, was like, I just didn't fancy a two pound. I'm not paying. I mean, that, was, that was only fucking two quid for a rolled sausage, which isn't that much. But I, 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 I struggle. Disco Minge Burger. No, Minge, Minge Burger sounds good, but I mean, uh, yeah. Economy Burgers. The ones that are like, uh, they're tessellated on the bottom. You know the ones. Those ones. <laughs> well questionable. I mean, I've, I've, honestly, I've been eating so many burgers this week, it's ridiculous. Thank fuck I met him after I, I visited Bur Burger Bob. He wanted to buy that wee effects pedal I had. Um, the, the delay one. He's like, oh, look, proper 30 quid. And he's like, you 20 for it. And I was like, no, he's a tenner and some burgers. And then he gave me fucking 18 burgers. So just like, don't give a boy with a tenner then. But his burgers are like 98% steak or something. And they're fucking amazing. So I've basically been eating two burgers a day since whatever day that was, I was over there. But luckily I went around to see my pal. And um, he didn't want the burgers, but I gave two to his pal who was fixing his car. <laughs> so I, here's a habit the, the Carolina Reaper ones and so at least I don't have all of them. Uh, but tone burgers, totally. Catch you later, Andy. I'm, I can't believe I'm still awake, to be honest. If anyone hasn't spiked the likes, if you could. If any, any requests, any requests to not play through a 50 quid rig? Yeah, fe feasibly 50 quid. That's including putting strings on this. I'm not charging money for the piece of wood that I put in it. You could just use a piece of cardboard. Uh, and obviously I'm using a wireless system. But you could use a lead. And then... Uh, uh. <sighs> Went to a gig last night, £5 for a can of tennis. It's ridiculous. It's like one of those... I don't know. I mean, the thing is, even before... The prices got pure high. I was drinking, a, me and my pals were drinking a bottle of Bucky on the train on the way in. And then basically my plan for whenever we went to any gigs was because on, on the train or on the bus, we would have a bottle of Bucky each. As soon as we get into the place, I would buy a round. And that meant I didn't have to buy any more rounds because I, would, I didn't really need, 
you know, there's always going to be three or four of us. I'm never going to drink three or four drinks. So I just buy the first one, buy everyone a drink. That's fine. And then an hour, you know, half an hour later, oh, do you want another pint? Yeah, okay. And then after that, it's like, I don't need it. I've still got this one. So I just did, I always did that first. <laughs> um, bit expensive. Catch you later, Ian. I need to come over and see you again, actually. I was meant to come over before Christmas, but we're running about like a lunatic. Just not done. Next time I'm in Paisley, because I'm on the hunt for guitars again, as usual. I might move on to, um, I've changed from my £25 amp on to my one that costs thousands of pounds, so I didn't pay thousands of pounds for it. Obviously, that'd be silly. Um, hundreds of pounds worth. Because oh, it's the, the rat pedal is better than what the thing you can do. Steely Dan, I worked to uh, play one of their songs. Um, Sorry, that's disgusting. Um, uh, the jam is tight, so <laughs> I'm just fucking making up. Deep purple, I can do deep purple. Uh, so. <laughs> Can't remember. Definitely you.
I don't know how you play that song. There you go. I don't know. I don't know Purple Rain. Um, I don't know any Prince. I remember all the glitters as gold being on the charts, but I don't know Purple Rain. Uh, oh. oh. I don't know how you play that song, but I don't really know any scorpions, although um Maybe my next bar, maybe put Sales of Sharon in it. If you've never heard that song, uh, which you might not recognise from what I played it, Sales of Sharon, Charon, C-H-A-R-O-N, um, by the Scorpions in, I don't know, late 70s with Yuli John Roth, Roth playing the guitar. Oh, fucking the best song ever. I've never really heard any other Scorpion songs that are in the same league as this one, but the guy playing, Yuli John Roth playing the Strat is just absolutely lording over it. It's just like you just watch someone play the guitar and you just go, fuck! It's so... He's in so much control. It's amazing. I don't know Twilight Zone. Like, if I could hum it, I could play it. Like, um, I can't remember how to play it. I like, my hands right on the wheel. I'm just winging this by the way. 
our way to a happy day. Fight the bumblebee. Haha, <laughs> it's like man of war, is it? No. No, no, I can't do that one. I don't know Flight of Icarus. I know it's an Iron Maiden song. No, I, Alex, I, Alex, I just, I, no, lyrics are not my thing. You hear me doing it all the time. It's like you hear it in the video. See when I'm trying to cover up for the fact I don't know what the next chord is by singing it and doing it. I could probably manage Run to the Hills, probably. So, so. It's like that whole just by singing louder and just going ah, 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 until you get there. I can play it recognizably enough. Hash pipe, don't know it. Do, 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 do. Hey, Dirty Blue Jean, how's it going? I don't know any. Uh, before you ask for electricity, I would love to be able to play electricity, but I don't know how to play it. Uh, I, just, I, I do know Hash Pipe is a. Is it Weezer? I was actually listening to Weezer earlier on. Um, there were you know, Weird Al Yankovic. So. There's a lot of chords in that. Um. <laughs> time I heard the Mob Rules, the song was actually when Heaven and Hell were playing it. Um pretty sure I've not listened to it since then. Um but it's great. I don't know wasted years. Well than the wasted years. <laughs> Thank you. 
Get his ball. Don't know what that means. It's not really small, but just been playing it all night. I wonder, is it going to make a big difference going on to a real guitar? And it's just uh... <laughs> ah, like without even playing a note, suddenly it's like, all right, okay, um, it's a different league having a proper size. Fuck it out. This doesn't have any of the fancy shit going on. Uh, this, is, this is a fantastic. Use it as a travel guitar. So, I mean, that's my point. With the travel guitar thing is if you're traveling, right? Actually, someone said earlier on before. We round this up. Someone guessed, is it Kit Kats? I think he's probably away to bed. Um, this is a heavy bastard. This is nearly four kilograms I'm going for. Um, this is this is as, as heavy as guitars, as, as far as guitars go. Even though it's small, it's heavy for a guitar. Okay, 3.66. 3.655. So, kind of about three and a half, three point six is exactly average for a guitar, I think. Um, but it's smaller. I don't know what this is. Never weighed it. Um, this is a not noticeably heavy or light, so I'm saying it's going to be exactly the same. It's going to be about three point six, three point six nine, three point six eight five. What did I say? What was the last one? Three point six five five. So basically the same weight, but it's full size, um, which makes that one heavy. But even then, this one, this is not a, it's not a lightweight guitar, but it's just the right weight. I see, I was using that one with that, um, humbucker mod that I like to use in it to make give it more balls. You don't necessarily need more balls when you've got the real the real deal. The doors the doors are dead difficult to play in it. Um, I was, what I always wanted to play was um Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I used to be able to play um, I, I don't know, I must be able to play Ador song. Dug our treasures there, find our treasures there. Catch the car, time to fight. So go back to the other side. No, no, I can't play any doors. I really got the doors about. I bought a DVD, which was the Dance on Fire video, which I've seen before, and. Was it the soft parade making of, which was still quite interesting, but um, it was alive at the Hollywood Bowl, 
And it's, it's one of those ones you, I never bought the video when it was out because it's that's only got like six songs on it. But obviously, some of them are 20 minutes long. The doors are fucking amazing. Watching them actually doing what they did, where you've just got well, it's really a three piece in it. You've got like keyboards playing the bass with his right hand, drums and guitar. And it's the, the way they can just build it up is fucking amazing. Um, yeah, I've I'm a big fan of the door. Well, yes, I'm a big fan of the doors. Go for that, but I'm not really listening to them that much. And it's very keyboard based. But I'm not really that bothered about whether something's a guitar or an orchestra or a keyboard or a vocal melody. I just like the tune. Um, hey, J Pack, stop being offensive. Um, I'm still up. I've been up since five this morning. I fucking was at the car boot sale before you were. All right, but look, oh no, I'm not playing. Literally, I've been playing that fucking that be shiter all night until about three minutes ago uh, when I picked up the a normal guitar and it's nice to go back to a normal size guitar, has to be said. It's all right, um, uh, Jim. It's a, it's a safe place here. You're allowed to admit whether you're a Morton fan. As long as you don't talk about them. But that's when it comes into like the football thing. It's like, oh, I'm not interested in football. I... Honestly, if you want to talk about Dundee playing Hibs, I'm not bothered about that. It's when it's the Rangers versus Celtic thing, really, just because of where I grew up. You know, I mean, it, it was it was such an such an, and it still is such an important thing to so many people. When you just go, why is it important? Ah, oh, fans are strong. <laughs> No, I get you. I don't know. The thing is that Jim, the you did assume that um, some of us knew that there was a football game on. Um, uh, th 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 there's th there's different levels of football fan. I used to be the the guy who just wasn't really interested in football, but I still know that the game was on because oh, what's everyone doing on Saturday night? And it's like people, oh, I don't know what you up to. It's like, I get a wee bit of my jam. It's like the football's the old no firm games on. Is it? What's anyone else up to? Uh, so <laughs> it just goes that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I grew up watching Morton. <laughs> I said, are you a football fan? I support Morton. Question answered. <laughs> um, Link Ray. I mean, I, I genuinely didn't know that song until I saw that um, It Might Get Loud video uh, film with Jack White. This is before I built my first Telecaster, actually, because Jack White built a guitar using a beer bottle, a string, and a Telecaster pickup, and a nail, and it was like... I can do that. I can do better than that. I can use frets and shit, so it can actually play in it eventually. So that's amazing. Um, but uh, Jimmy Page, is, I don't know the chords. So, That sweet child of mine. I can't remember the chords. Uh, <laughs> let's just move on. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's banned in US radio. Why is it banned in US radio? Uh, yeah, I did. I did eat them. Did you see them, Jen? I've eaten. Oh, I must have eaten. I don't think I've eaten six yet. But I mean, it's like the tacos. They, they really are. Look at the, look at them. Look. Well, they're very good value. <laughs> I'll bring this packet over on Wednesday and you can try one. But, um, ah! Ah! I wish I knew it better. I'm wondering what it does to anything else. It's fucking blue though. Um, but I had to buy them. I'm just glad that Rather than trying them in America and having to obviously having to eat a five dollar packet, 
five dollars is pretty much five pounds pack out of fucking crisps i right um i don't think, I don't even think it was just it was one off as well you know I mean? it wasn't like six packets in a it was just one bag um it's it's blue and hot that was worth it uh, Johnny Cash, I don't even know. I like, you, you keep it in. I, I, I do like some. Uh... Mm. Almost getting almost there now. So, I don't want to judge it, does it? I was a highwayman. Cross the clothes, toes, and it was silent, pistol by my side. And the tired old moon rising, able to imagine. I need to, I'm going to learn that one again because it's a fucking amazing song, especially when Johnny Cash comes in. This is but I rode a starship across the across the universe divide. And when I reach the other side, I'm making good and up again. Then I may become a happy man again. That last chord. Then I may simply... Ah, fuck off. <laughs> I've heard from just the best of chorus. Yeah, I can't remember it. The thing is, I can probably remember the words. I just can't remember the tune. I was a sailor. I, I'm sure I did. I was a sailor. Across the ocean, deep and wide. Pressed to the water, do you collide? And a tank of boat around the mighty Colorado. I'm going to work that one out. Um, Lily Nelson. Right, I am drunk enough. I've made enough of a fool of myself. Um, just for joining in. Um, yeah. I'm totally, I will be asleep within the hour, but I sure, because I am. Um, it's late. Uh, and I will learn how to play the highwayman. The problem is, it's one of those songs, there's a couple of songs like that where I get a bit emotional when I play it. What's the other one? I'll go, I'll play it, innit? Oh, I remember what it goes like. Oh. Uh, there's a few songs that kind of make me just tear up. Um <laughs> Oh, 
It's an amazing song. Can't believe it. Um, oh. Oh. What's your favourite tune? It's Sip to the Universe by Black Sabbath. And my favourite album of all time is Sabotage by Black Sabbath. Sip to the Universe has the intro, has the heavy, the best riff of all time. Less notes, better riff. Da, 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 da. Two notes. Um, and then it's got the end bit. Yeah, the best song ever. As yes, it is. It's a bullet trust road. This is a tempest, but you could also buy this as an Ibanez and about fifty other makes. It's why the lawsuit exists. It's more like my Japanese Fender Strats than anything else because it's basically that's exactly what it is. Uh, mm. Foggy Mountain Breakdown. I don't know. I could probably wing it. Uh, I can't play with I, I, my effects aren't in. I don't have any effects. Um, I was tempted actually to look out my super fuzz pedal. I was watching as a video of uh, Joe Bonamassa playing like Hendrix's exact fucking hundred thousand dollar rig from Woodstock, and like a a thousand dollar Squire and a PV amp and modern pedals. Sound, um, um, but he was talking about using the Octavia pedal, and I've got an Octave fuzz. Is that basically the trick about that? Is you've got to run the volume on the guitar at like one or two, and then the Octave thing works. But I never thought of that, so I need to dig out my super fuzz because I do have one, but it's kind of a strange one when you get the Octavia. It was made by somebody's uncle. I bought it from um, Facebook Marketplace. It was a guy, was it York or something like that? It was like, it was only a tenner. <laughs> it was a beer. Handmade pedal, switches broken. is a bit intermittent. And I was thinking, I don't know how to wire a pedal, but I'm pretty sure I can fucking replace a stop switch. And basically that's it. The guy's like, beer. yeah, my uncle made it. But the switch is a bit intermittent. So I just replaced the switch and I've got a super fuzz hand built. I don't know anything about it. <sighs> The strat is, it wasn't, honestly, it was not intentional. I didn't intend on buying it. Uh, it was just, I was, it was going to be one of those ones This might be Japanese and Paul Gordon's up here. I think this is Japanese. I'm up here. I don't know. Go and see it anyway. It was only five minutes up the road. And as soon as I just went, it was like, oh, fuck. The guy's like, oh, we're up here. So I just want to plug it into an amp. And it's like, oh. I was here to haggle, man. It's like, there's your money. Fuck it. And, you know, it's like, because it's amazing. Um, Nobody would be able to play this guitar. I mean, you can be as snobby as you like, but anyway, if you honestly two minutes playing this, one 30 seconds playing this, and you would go, Oh, I see what you mean. This is something different. It's a bit buzzy here, though. I need to, I need to raise the action a bit. It's just I've got it, I've got it set up like a fucking PGM, a millimeter action, and it's like strats aren't made to do that. But it's also got um see the strap is actually a Jimi Hendrix strap, which I hadn't really thought about. So it's actually even got Jimi Hendrix's signature on it. But um I just like the white, the white and the white. It's got a white and a white thing. Anyhow, rock on and thanks for joining in. And uh I will see you during the week with loads of shit. We're gonna we will get some sort of jazz boxes coming up this week. Uh, what else we got? Wheel in the sky. I don't know. Anyhow, rock on. Cheers, Bulk. Your name is just brilliant. It's like, 
it's it doesn't matter how many times there's that pure Colin having his like I'm so pleased I've got a pal called Bulk. Like, you can know someone called Bulk, hey, what's his second name? Hogan, like that. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. <laughs> Rock on. Catch y'all later during the week. <laughs>